This episode of Chicago's Bravest Stories is brought to you by Fire Consultant Corporation. Fire science is a field full of passion, excitement, and valor. Although the brothers and sisters of the firefighting industry are all cut from a different cloth, the one trait that weaves everyone together in firefighting industry is the hunger to do something with meaning. If this same passion drives you and you're interested in the fire science EMS career, Fire Consultant Corporation can be your guiding light to a successful professional journey. Fire Consultant provides learning workshops that will educate you on what it takes to become a firefighter. Each workshop is filled with concise, high-quality, step-by-step information on the world of fire science and EMS. Go to fire-consultant.com to find out more information on their next workshop and to find their social media handles to keep updates on everything fire science and EMS. This episode also brought to you by FNX supplements and apparel if you're in need of great reliable and safe supplements to help you through the hard workouts look no further fnx premier supplement and fitness apparel supplier founded by athletes like brooke entz camille leblanc bazinet all their gear and supplements uh, follow strict guidelines set forth by the world anti-doping association and are strictly regulated by the FDA. With no fillers, no tainted ingredients, they have pre-workouts, super greens, proteins, recovery, and CBD. Check them out at fnxfit.com. And if you use the referral code Chicago's Bravest, you'll get 15% off their supplements and workout apparel. Again, fnxfit.com and use our referral code Chicago's Bravest and get 15% off. Thanks again for listening. Chicago's Bravest Stories. We're here with uh, Lieutenant John Garrido. Hi, John. Hello. Thank you for having me on your show. Appreciate it. Thank out, you John. so much for being here. And uh, we're also here with Freddie, John's dog, which <laughs> we will get into that. He's trying to uh, drink my beer at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of drinking my beer, uh, he's ac- Freddie's actually trying to drink uh, our new Lake Effect brewery beer called uh is it actually called rock the badges beer well it's uh it's first responders brew first responders brew yeah first responder brew exclusively for rock the badges okay and we are gonna actually make a phone call let's get clint Baltz on the phone the owner of lake effect brewery so uh, how'd you get involved with these guys john so uh this is would have been our uh eighth year of doing Rock the Badges, uh, which is an event that we do. Um, basically, it's a festival uh, where we have bands that'll play, and they're either, either the bands will either have a firefighter or a police officer in each of the bands. And we raise money for the Chicago Police Memorial Foundation and Ignite the Spirit. They're two charities that help first responders, uh, the families of first responders that are killed or catastrophic be injured in the line of duty. So we're always coming up with uh, different ways over the last seven years of doing Rock the Badges uh, to either enhance it or to help raise money to contribute to that. And we've done everything from, uh, I'll talk a little bit later about cop cakes uh, with uh, fannies mm-hmm. over in uh, Six Corners. Uh, we've done uh, truffles, uh, blue, thin blue line truffles with City News. And uh, we've done thin blue line cookies with Sweet Connection, or not Sweet Connections, I'm sorry, Dobra. Uh, <laughs> delightful pastries. And uh, we so we're always promoting different things. Well, I had uh, heard that um, there's another place that we do a lot a lot with is called the Garage Bar and Sandwiches. Oh, yeah. And they had, on Milwaukee. On Milwaukee Avenue, yeah. <clears throat> and they had an event for Superdog where they were launching a Superdog beer. Oh, wow. I, I remember thinking about that. That was a couple of years ago, and I was like, oh, that would be cool. We could do a Rock the Badges beer. Yeah. Then the next year, then I forgot about it. And then the next year, you got we, a lot going on. I don't know. Yeah. Of things, yeah. <laughs> then the next year, uh, they all of a sudden they came out with a uh, beer for Fanny's. Now Fanny's does our cop cakes. Yeah. So they did a Fanny's beer and I was like, all right, I got, I got to get a hold of this guy that owns the effect brewery. Right. We got to talk about it. Uh, so then again, I forgot about it. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, one day I did another post and Clint from Lake effect brewery. He actually commented on the post that when are you going to come here and do a Facebook live? And that's when I was like, all right, now <laughs> well, we're going to talk about now's it. Now's the time. Let's get, him let's, on, get Clint uh, let's get him on the phone. Oh, look at this. There's a, there's a real-time operation we got going on. Yeah, ring and oh, everything. yeah. yeah. We, it took us forever to run that string from this tin can all the way to uh, – <laughs> uh, 
4700 block of uh, Montrose. Montrose. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's for sure going to voicemail. It's because he's brewing well, first responder brew. We'll try that because he, he's actively brewing a batch of this. When I talked to him earlier, he's actually brewing this. He is actually creating it right, right now. now. Yes. Has, yes. Has, literally yeah. as we speak. Uh, at the recording of this, he was actually making his new batch of this um, uh, beer that we're talking about. Sitting there above a vat with a ten foot long spoon. Well, I went there. Around. I went there to pick up the the six pack that we're drinking right now, and it was legitimately. I was in the brewery oh, picking yeah. this up, and it, you know he does have the big vats, and it's like. Uh, and I just watched the um, with the quarantine. I just uh, watched the uh, the whole. See all the seasons of Boardwalk Empire, oh, the, the Prohibition, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh man, this was must have been what it was like <laughs> back in the day, you know? Yeah. Um, but he's got the vats there, and they're brewing the beer. Like, so you talk about like actually fresh beer that hasn't been sitting on a shelf forever. Like this was literally coming off, you know, being uh, canned right there in front of me when uh, I went to pick it up. So what you're drinking right now is. A day old. Oh God! And yeah. uh, so it, it um it it's not really like hoppy, yeah. but it's like full of flavor. Yeah, I was just saying I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of not you know yeah not just a super duper IP. Um, yeah. so I imagine that uh, it's funny Clint, you said that. Clint's gonna call me about back that a little bit. Oh yeah, what's that? <laughs> so uh, when when I first went to meet with Clint, uh, he he was immediately on board. I yeah. mean, just just jumped right in and said absolutely, and we're coming up with ideas for the beers. And uh, originally we were gonna have two beers, one uh, a, a actual firefighter beer, and then one was gonna be a police officer beer. The firefighter beer was gonna be a little red. Uh -huh. uh, you know, it was gonna be something like that. And then uh, uh, I, I know there's lots of different IPAs and IPAs can be, you know, some can be bitter and they right. can, you know, a variety of things. So I told him, I was like, okay, listen, I'm going to absolutely insult you right now. I said, but can you create Miller Lite? <laughs> because police officers and firefighters, they love their Miller Lite yeah. or their old style or whatever. So he immediately was insulted. <laughs> and, well, once he got over that, he says, I'll make something but better. It's, it's got to be clearly, clearly better. Well, that, and, that's yeah. what it tastes like. It, it, it tastes like, like something that you can drink, you know, more than one of yeah, at a 12, time. 12, 13, 14. Yeah, of them definitely. <laughs> right. But it's definitely not Miller Lite, obviously. It's, right. uh, it's, 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 you know, 10 steps up. It's just really, 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 I think I love it. It came out exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's it's I, like I if, if, it's it. like if Gordon Ramsay cooked a, uh, a, a Big Mac, yes. you know, that's what, <laughs> that's what this is. Exactly. <laughs> it's just, it's very good. It's drinkable. It's uh, refreshing. It doesn't have that bitter, uh, you know, uh, overly happy taste. Yeah. To it. And so all the, so this is to raise money for Rock the Badges and uh, right. So Rock the Badges, any money that we bring in under the Rock the Badges umbrella, let's say, uh, goes to get split between the firefighter charity, which is uh, Ignite the Spirit, right. and the police charity with the Chicago Police Memorial right. Foundation. Rich Pinsky is Rich Pinsky. involved in that, and he's kind of our guy on the the CFD side. Who, right. I mean, he just does amazing stuff for Correct. guys who were, you know, in need of help. So yes, and he's true. he's been there for hundreds of people throughout the years. Uh, and they were there from day. They were the first charity that we chose on the fire side to uh, yeah. to to work with. Wow. And and that's when I met Rich uh, back in 2013 was our first year doing this, and uh, and they've been great. And uh, and that's what we do. So anything that we raise under this Rock the Badges umbrella then gets split between those two charities. Okay. And, and this kind of got pushed back a little bit with. Um uh, with the uh, with all this COVID stuff going on, right? So originally, originally we were supposed to have rocked the badges this year, um, June thirteenth and fourteenth. Right. Those were the dates. Uh, we we've expanded it over the years. We started off inside Copernica Center, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, right over there on Lawrence in Milwaukee, and we originally started inside on their stage. We did that for a couple of years, and then we moved out into their parking lot, and we did that for several years in Copernicus. It just, it they have been up. great. They were they were yeah. awesome. Uh, then two years ago, we expanded. We did two Rock the Badges. We did one at Copernicus, yeah. and we did one down at Wrigley Field over there. Oh, yeah. On that, I do um, remember that, yeah. Outside there. And both were great, but we wanted to um, we wanted to try to take it to another level. Yeah. Because I think what, what the perception out there might have been was that, that Rock the Badges was 
it's just for firefighters and police officers and their families. Right. right? So we wanted to get the public more involved. involved so what better way to get the public involved than to shut their streets down, right? Right, <laughs> right. So we decided to move to Six Corners. Mm -hmm. And that's what last year was the first year we did that. We closed down Six Corners. And uh, we closed down, actually, um, Milwaukee Avenue mm -hmm. at Irving there. And uh, it was phenomenal. It was it was great. We we kicked it off a little bit with some 95 degree weather, but then, and then yeah. it poured rain on us. Uh, but then after that, it was, a uh, it was after perfect. That was smooth sailing. It was smooth sailing. Yeah. So it was great. And so this year we had all these ideas for rock the badges for the, for the beer, you yeah. know, we were going to, we were going to have a pre-launch and then a pre-launch of the launch. I mean, yeah, it was going to be, we were going to have a whole tent that was going to be just, you know, kegs of this. So we, we really, oh, wow. really were, yeah, we're going to go big with it. And the pandemic right. set in. But he had already, we started the process. We had, um, so the, the can is designed by a police detective, Russ Schultz, of RAS Communications. Oh, wow. Uh, and that's the design you see, like the, uh, the, the guitar. The star in the, the, yeah. We'll see the guitar. It's a guitar. They're the ends of guitars. Mm -hmm. One's fire, one's police, and it's the memorial and Ignite the Spirits uh, logos on there. That's awesome. He and, drew the, uh, the the guys on there too no so we reached out then so we needed an artist and my go-to artist is peter bucks peter bucks if you don't know he's a chicago police officer really? a phenomenal artist mm -hmm. uh if you go in the police station you know we have a dog one of those dogs in there he mm -hmm. painted the dog uh also over there on milwaukee avenue near central and foster you know that um are you familiar with the newsstand yeah that we yeah. re remodeled Oh yeah, right. Yeah, those, well, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about that. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. those murals that are on there were painted by Peter Bucks. Okay, and oh, really? this guy, yeah. I'll I'll call him up and say, okay, here's what I'm thinking, and I give him an idea. Literally within a day, he comes back with what I look at as a finished product, but he's like, you know, it's a draft. <laughs> yeah, and uh, just and then, from some nonsense that you spewed out for right, five he minutes. Right, you know, <laughs> like, he just it. whips it. Out. It's incredible. He just yeah. produces it, and then I'll be like, well, you know, maybe we can tweak this or tweak that, and and he just. He's really, really good at reading what it is that you're looking for. Yeah, and what then, you're trying to get through. And then, and, and then he just creates some amazing work. So, well, those those images great. on those cans are amazing. Yeah. yeah so he painted Very those. Cool. Yeah. Those are. And that's if you want to see those, though, we've posted those on our uh, Facebook pages. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, before we get too far into that, uh, right. let's go back to you, John. You've at this point how many years with um, CPD? 29. So 29. 20, yeah, 29 years. Wow. And right. from what I understand, you started your career, it, from what I read, it's the west side, but um, like... Grand and Central. Grand and Central? Over the 25th District, yep. Okay. Yeah. So right down the street from uh, our guy Steve, uh, Steve's Firehouse. Yeah. yeah, right over there. Um, did you spend most of your, like, and that was as a patrolman? Yeah, so I was there as a patrolman for about my first five and a half, six years. Uh, then from there, I went to narcotics, and I became a uh, narcotics bio-officer and okay. did that for a little while uh then what, was, what does that entail that sounds cool it was very cool that was a, a very very fun time <laughs> right. uh, especially growing up you and i are roughly the same age so growing up watching miami vice that yeah. had to be right up your alley it was it was very <laughs> cool uh and at the time i had grown my hair longer and i was probably about 30 pounds lighter so i had the whole COVID uh, weight. we talked about yeah. this right <laughs> yeah, you put on some yeah, exactly yeah. some pandemic COVID weight uh but it was uh it was a blast and there's that exhilaration of uh, when you're when you are doing your undercover work uh, because you're you know you're going to buy drugs and you're hoping that they don't know that you're the police because that'll that'll blow the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, but then at the same time, it's just as dangerous when they don't think that you're the police because now they're more apt to either because now you're you're a target. Yeah. You're gonna be a target, right? Right. Right. Uh, so it was a a lot of fun from you know wearing wires and uh, just uh, doing street buys and uh, putting trackers under people's cars. Uh, so I say people, I mean drug dealer. Right. What um, <laughs> yeah. what has changed the like what was the majority of like you know now out on the west side the big drug is heroin was heroin heroin as prevalent back when you were doing that type of work? Yeah, it, it was. It was uh, heroin and crack. Yeah, those are, those are the crack has gone out of favor. It doesn't seem. Yeah, yeah. I think the, I think much, it, but it I think the money is in heroin. That's why heroin's been constant. It's been there yeah. from then, right. and it's still there now. Yeah. So sure. um, why? That's not something. That, not much longevity in that line of work for you as a police officer. You you had to move on from there. If I could have, I would have spent my whole career really? there. I was having so much fun. <laughs> really? uh, and as How a matter deep of fact, in your career was that? That was. Uh... 
That was, I'm sorry. How how deep in the in the CPD were you when uh, when you moved? I was uh, about six years on. Oh, okay. At that point, so, oh, so you're a relatively young guy. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So I was in my 20s, still having oh. a great time. Uh, and anytime they give police ex- exams for promotion, you always take them. Yeah. So at the right. time, I had taken uh, prior to going to narcotics, I'd taken a sergeant's exam and a detective's exam. So the lists came out for both of them, and mm-hmm. I scored okay on them, but not. Not super great, so I wasn't in the first few classes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but while in narcotics, my number came up for detective. So I remember Phil Klein was the commander at the time, who's oh, yeah. actually, uh, he runs the Chicago Police Memorial Foundation. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's the one that started the whole memorial, and wow. uh, it, he put it all together. He's but not, He was one of our best superintendents we've ever had, yeah. in my oh, opinion. Really? Uh, but he was the commander of narcotics at the time, and I went into him and said, you know what, I, I want to pass on being a detective. I'm gonna, I, I want to stay here. Yeah. I'm having a great time here. And he told me, he goes, you have two choices. You can either take detective or you can go back to district. Oh, I remember walking out of his man. office thinking, man, what a, <laughs> right. yeah, what a really? The, the big guy just yeah. gave you an ultimatum. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it was like I was going to get kicked out of narcotics. I, mean, right. I had to become, so I took the promotion to detective and he was right. It definitely adds to, just makes you a more rounded police officer. It gives yeah. you the other, the other aspect, you know, as that preliminary investigator that you don't necessarily see you know, what comes later on with the detective part. Right. So he, he was right dead on and it, it was great. So at, at what point in your, during your um, career as a police officer, did you decide that you wanted to get into law or as a, as a, as an attorney? So, so let's see, the progression was uh, when I came on the police department, I only had a high school diploma because at that time that's all you needed. Yeah. Uh, so after a year on the job, I started going back to school part-time. We had the tuition reimbursement program Mm -hmm. and I would take two classes a semester and just sometimes I'd skip a semester and just keep going along. Uh, I continued to do that until I got my bachelor's degree from Lewis university in criminal justice. And then from there, uh, between, uh, I over during that time, I ended up getting married and between my wife, Anna and, uh, another police officer, uh, He's a lieutenant now. Ken Stopa um, convinced me that I, to go to law school. Uh, so because I was thinking, okay, I'm done with school. I got my right. bachelor's. <laughs> I'm good. I don't need anything else. Uh, but then I decided to go to law school part time at uh, John Marshall. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but from beginning to end, it took me 14 and a half years going part time. So, so those kids out there at home, if you're <laughs> thinking about not finishing school right away. Bad idea. <laughs> it takes a really long time going part time. It's better just to do it and get it done and get it out of and the way. And this was just all based on on your wife saying that you win a bunch of arguments all the time, so you should go to law school. Like that's all based on that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, she might differ on that uh, exactly you know, about yeah. who wins the arguments, but uh, but yeah, no. So so I just did that at the same time. So that fourteen and a half year progression during that time, then I was able to become. A detective off the list and then uh, um, for two years I was a detective then I got promoted to sergeant off of that list the test that I'd taken previous yeah uh, and then from there I got promoted to lieutenant so I finished law school in right right around the time finished law school in 2006 and I became lieutenant in 2008 so it was kind oh, of wow yeah pretty yeah. pretty all in the same boat yeah. any uh any any interesting stories early in your career with um, working narcotics? Or? Yeah, you gotta have you gotta have some pretty amazing stories during that whole period. Uh, Anything you could talk about at least? Um, <laughs> there's boy. I mean, there's you're, you're, I mean, you're a lawyer. You should right. know what I'm sure there's uh, we can get away with. Out there too, so. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, lots of stories. Uh, well, I mean, a crazy story that that I mean, there yeah, there's there's probably tons. I yeah. just think about them for a minute. But uh, one in particular that did happen was back in. Um, 1993, and this was actually before I even went to narcotics or anything else. I was a patrolman, and uh, while on my way home, I stopped at a 7-Eleven to use the phone, the pay phone. Yeah, because we were, we were <laughs> yeah, using the old pay, right. the old pay well, because we had pagers. Back oh then. wow! So, so I got a page, so I <laughs> pull over, and I was going to use it and have right. them call me back, or I was, you know, uh, use the phone to page back, right. call back. I mean, and uh, the phone wasn't working, so. The 7-Eleven was actually at Belmont and Austin, and I was on the side of the street that was in the 25th district still. So I stopped in, asked the clerk if I could use the phone. He said, no problem. Uh, while I was waiting for the call back, uh, he said there was two guys out in the car that were giving him a hard time. They wanted to buy beer, and at this time, you know, they stopped selling already. Mm-hmm. So I was 
two and a half years on the job. And back then you think, oh, all I have to do is show my badge and the world stops <laughs> and everybody listens. Not the case. No. <laughs> so I went out there and it was, uh, I walked in between the two cars onto the driver's side of the car and I tapped on the window and showed my badge and I was just going to tell him, you know, time to go. Well, it turns out the driver was actually uh, trying to um, peel the column and the passenger was trying to pop the ignition. Oh, wow. So they were actually trying to steal the car. You yeah. stumbled upon. I stumbled upon <laughs> a car theft. Yeah, in progress. So immediately, apparently, the, the driver, he actually was out on parole, so he didn't want to go back to prison. So he oh, rolled, no. up, rolled out of the car on me and grabbed me, and we started fighting. Uh, the other offender came around, got me, and uh, they both were able to get me down to the ground. From that point, while the, uh, the one offender was on top of me, the other one started to kick me in the head and face repeatedly, oh, uh, literally so hard you could see. Uh, I was actually seeing flashes of light because yeah. my head was hitting the rim of the car next to me. Um, the other offender then reached and was trying to get my gun. So now we're fighting for the gun uh, and while the other guy's kicking me in the head. And as I was starting to, or I thought I was going to lose consciousness, I could just feel the the grip of the gun slowly just slip out of my hand. Uh, the offender then stood up over me and he fired twice, point blank, at me. Um, thankfully, he at, missed. At you while you were laying on the while ground? While I was laying on the ground, he stood over me and fired twice. Oh, my God. Uh, luckily, just bad aim. Uh, he ended up missing. He took off. The other guy uh, stuck around, gave me a few more boots, and then he took off. Uh, they caught the one offender on scene. Uh, he then was brought back to the station, and he actually escaped from Get the uh, yeah from the holding room at the uh, 25th out. district so there's a manhunt they caught him the next day and then he gave up it was his brother-in-law it was the other guy i ended up getting 37 stitches they had to do reconstructive surgery in my lips oh my, my God. jaw was dislocated wow. fractured my cheekbone um yeah it was uh they recover your firearm yeah yeah they did nice. about a half a block away in, in some bushes so so both offenders were in uh they got um How many the one guy got one guy got seven years uh the guy who shot at me he got seven years the other guy got nine years, and uh, while he was in, he ended up murdering another guy in there, and then he committed suicide about three years ago. Jeez. So he's this gone. is two years into your career, huh? Yeah. yeah. Fuck. So. so, yeah, so. Corey, were you, Def were you expecting that story? <laughs> no. <laughs> was, hey. I mean, I was, and plus, I mean, not to put you on the spot here, John, I was, I was hoping there was some comic relief in there. Some there was no, comic, there really was no <laughs> comic relief whatsoever. <laughs> it's like a Schwarzenegger movie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I guess, you know, we yeah, asked for a cop story. story. You got a very I mean, dark. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but I'm here today. I, I tell you, it gave me a new perspective. Well, I'll drink uh, to that. that I'm, so, yeah, I'm glad you're here. There Make Effect Brewery. Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah, wow. Oh, well, man. John, and that's tell just me, tell, the iceberg yeah, probably, yeah, too. <laughs> Where do you go from there, John? Like, uh, yeah, I know, right? Well, everything is be better and funnier right. from there, right? Right. <laughs> just think, you could get shot at once and get kicked in the head five times, and you're still having a better day. You're having a better better than, than that one day. day. Yeah, that one day was definitely no No, bueno, kids, so sure. big, big recovery then, I got to imagine. You yeah, were yeah. Off, and, right? man, that, that was when I really, really, truly learned about the brotherhood. Oh yeah, the, the department, the the way that everybody uh, came together. Uh, they were at the hospital. I was living up on Cumberland at the time, and whenever any officer um, was driving by, they would beep their horn, like just to say hello. Oh, yeah, I was literally hearing beeps from the time I was. <laughs> I'd wake up in the morning until time. When, I mean, almost like every fifteen minutes. Right. I mean, they were just constantly. Is that a, just, is that an actual thing with police officers that they do that? I don't know. They did it then. Okay. I have no idea. No, it's, I don't know if it's a thing, but uh, <laughs> Cumberland was a good thoroughfare there. So there was just happened to be where I was at the time, but, but they were between coming over, bringing me things. Uh, they, they bought me a cell phone. That was right when cell phones first <laughs> oh, came wow. out back yeah. in the early Was it a big brick one? Oh, I think it was a bigger yeah. one, <laughs> but yeah, they got, they got me a cell phone. They, they collected and said, yeah, no more pay phones for you. Uh, <laughs> they, they got me a, what was it at the time? Uh, Nintendo. Oh yeah, yeah. So you know, oh, no the, kidding. Uh, got really good at Super Mario. I got really good at Super <laughs> Mario. And what was the one where the uh, Mortal Kombat? Oh uh, man, yeah, yeah. That's that's the one. Yeah. Um, now, wow. you're now you're talking Cody's language. Yeah, because he he when you said about payphone and pagers, he's looking at like what? So oh, what so about? Cody, there was a time where you had to put quarters in a phone. And you had to have a it, pocket full of change. Yes. <laughs> you had to have a pocket full of change. <laughs> yeah. God forbid it was a long distance call. Right. You know, and that, those were back in days where you could the... receive a phone call back to that pay phone. Right. Yeah. You'd right. Call you could right. call, call back, back to the pay phone. Or what you could do is with the pager, we would use coordinates. 
So if oh. you are at at Irving, if you're going to meet somebody at Irving and Cicero, Give you put in your code so you know. Like let's say my code was one two three. Yeah. One two three, and then I would give the coordinates. So it'd be. 4,800 4,000 4, north. <laughs> and wow. just put in those coordinates and, yeah. and a time you could even throw in. Wow. Huh. We learned how to use the pagers to Yeah, work that thing pretty <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no, Cody. There it was were... just us being cheap, so we had to make a call back. <laughs> yeah, if, if you believe or not, you would keep change in, <laughs> Quarters the, cigarette, in the cigarette <laughs> holder of your car when you drove around. <laughs> Neither of those things existed. Yeah. yeah. So did that kind of like lead you down the path to, cause you do so much of this stuff now, like this rock, the badges, all this charity stuff and, you know, and we'll get into, you know, the, the other, your, charities, your, yeah. your other stuff, but is this kind of what started off you wanting to give back as much as you do? Uh, I think it, it definitely at that time, it, it just really changed my perspective on things of, uh, of just doing things. So I, I'll, and a lot of times, sometimes it'll backfire on me, but I usually step before I think it through. I just <laughs> do it. It's, you know, if we, we have an idea and it looks like it's going to be, a, I think it's going to be a good idea and help a lot of people, we just go ahead and just, just do it and go it's, forward. So it's more living in the moment type thing. Right. Well, I think more gets done that way. Um, Better to ask forgiveness than permission. Yeah, that, that, that's kind of this podcast's motto right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, what I see too, that's, that's our job too. John, you, you got to you know us and, and especially you guys we we got to make a decision and a snap you know in, in a half a second on what we're going to do and it could be detrimental or not but if if you don't move at all it's even worse than making the bad decision it seems like sometimes right and you know i i've said this before uh because of the things that i've done publicly uh, it sort of puts a little bit of a public face on the things that I happen to be doing, right. but I'm really not doing too much more than what, what, or maybe even more at all, really, than what a lot of police officers and firefighters do all the time out there. Right. It's just, I get more attention by it because of, I have a little bit more of a public persona and right. then the Facebook live stuff and, and yeah. you know, all that. Well, you're putting a face to Putting to a it, face to it, but you're that guy. But there's a lot of police officers and firefighters out there that are doing that like this this stuff and even more and yeah. they're just not getting the recognition or attention for it and they're not looking for it mm -hmm. um you know uh i use the attention recognition to hopefully enhance it yeah and make it better give it give um, more steam there's people it. out there that are just uh you know i mean one time i was uh there was this without going to the whole story about a newsstand i was standing out there um and i needed a an officer that was driving by to do something for me so i flagged him down and when he pulled up, he had somebody in the back of the car, and I assumed that he had a prisoner. I said, yeah. oh, don't worry about it. You've got an arrest. Um, I'll get somebody else. And he said, no, no, no. He goes, you know, this is Jimmy. Uh, you know, I was talking to him. He's hungry, so I'm taking him to buy him some food up at the McDonald's. Now, here's an officer that, you know, it wasn't on Facebook. It wasn't on camera. He right. just, And I only know about it because I happened to flag him down, and he had somebody in the car. Right, right. It, so. It's yeah. We were just talking about with with um, Tim. You know, like there's, you rarely do you hear about the the great things. It's just a good news story when something bad happens. You know, right? right. Um, wow. Well, here I, let's. I mean, going back to you, John. So what what kind of got you interested in this whole thing? Did you grow up in in the city or in in the neighborhood? And so um, grew up all over the place actually I started off in bridgeport i was okay. born in michael reese hospital lived in bridgeport for a little while then we moved up north uh to the damon and foster area okay uh then i was at oakdale and ashland and then we moved uh when i was about 12 13 years old did you have family the on the suburbs. jobs uh, my father yeah my father was on the police department for 38 years okay wow. uh, but How my parents him. got divorced when i was two oh. so they uh, uh they quite a few marriages between the two of them so, yeah uh, yeah <laughs> so so we ended up moving around a little bit uh yeah. so then i did uh, uh from fifth grade until and uh, through high school out in the suburbs i graduated from streamwood high school in 85 okay. yeah. 1985 cody were you born yet <laughs> no I didn't, I didn't think so I, in 85 i was a sophomore in 85 nice at schaumburg okay oh, so, so you're right the bitter rivals oh, rivals yes. <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so out in the suburbs and then in 85, then I, uh, moved back into the city. Uh, I did go to DePaul university right out of high school for one semester and then decided I was going to take a break. And then from there I moved around the country. Oh, wow. A bunch of other things that I did. Yeah. Yeah. And then what kind of, what kind of drove you back to, to the So my father, my father was, 
like I said, he was a Chicago police officer for 38 years, yeah. and he was really, really pushing me to, to you know, go through the process for the Chicago Police Department. And at first, I didn't want to. Mm-hmm. I was uh, just had plans to do other things. And, um, and then, uh, and especially at that time, I got a job working for a company called Cinnabon. Oh, yeah. Cinnamon rolls. I was going to bring that. I didn't know if that was something you didn't want to talk about, but <laughs> you kind of got the nickname, right? I talk about everything else. Cinn- <laughs> Cinnabon John. Got it there. I got it out. I said it. There you go. I wasn't right. going to bring it up. No, no. Go I was, ahead. I look forward to it. I'll, I'll, I'll take tell the you beat what, down when I get back is, to work. It, that is a much better nickname than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> it could have been way Cinnabon worse. John Flores. It been, it yeah, does. No, it does. It rolls off the tongue. It does. Yeah. So, wow. So, yeah. So, I was doing the Cinnabon thing, and... Yeah. Uh, uh, and then with them, I was kind of freelancing, so I would work in different uh, states, uh, helping franchises open up their, oh, yeah. their new places and stuff. Yeah. So I was really having a good time with it, And uh, uh, but my father would call me and say, hey, you got the letter for the next phase. Mm-hmm. And so I would come back to Chicago. I would do the next part of the testing, and then I would take off again. Well, I, I have to imagine that it the police department back when your dad was a patrolman is much different than the oh, police. Yeah. Like, you know— from the guys that I talked to from the police department, um, I had family who were police officers, and they were saying back in the day, there were good guys and bad guys. You know, the bad guys knew when they were caught right. that, you know, it, you did, you know, whatever, and that was it. That was the cost of doing business. Now it's cell phones and cameras, and the police are the bad guys a lot of times. So. It's dramatically different. Uh, he came on in January of 1968. So oh, wow. back then was you know right with the uh, the Democratic yeah. convention, oh, the yeah. riots and yeah, all that stuff. Riots, oh. Yeah. So, so was that, he was he, he a part of that? Uh, yeah, he was actually. They pulled him out of the academy and sent him down. There. Wow. So, oh, so. so you can he can actually wear those t shirts that I was beating up, uh, uh, you know, when you were before you were born. You see those t shirts. <laughs> Your grandfather or something. <laughs> right. there, yeah. Oh. Yeah, my father. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the funny thing is, is so he came on in January '68, and I came on in January '91. So when he came out of the academy, he went right into the Democratic Convention riots. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, not that it was even quite the same. I got to enjoy the Bulls riots. I, you know, that was I the, thought that's where you were going, but yeah, I was right, yeah, sure. I like, got, what's going on in 91? Those were, I mean, I oh, remember yeah. being in the streets there at like the second one and the bars opened, just emptied out onto the street. It was like Mardi Gras oh, yeah, you know, yeah. for the entire city. And it, they were flipping cars, you know. It was definitely it, it was yeah, more of the was revelers, destructive revelers. Yeah. I say was the bulls riots compared to uh, yeah, absolutely di- different dynamic in the sixties. Yeah, I mean, so the bulls win. Every drunken person from these bars are now in the streets, mm-hmm. g- losing their mm-hmm. minds. Right. So you know, it was a different protest. It, well, it really <laughs> caught us off guard. You guys were you guys weren't expecting that at all, huh? No. Th- it never happened before where right. where where people yeah. celebrating all of a sudden just for, for something good yeah right. for something good and they're and they're blowing stuff up right yeah they got a little crazy uh, uh but then we were getting ready for it every year because the bulls were doing so well yeah uh, they won, won six times yeah so not in a row i think but three and then took a break and then three yeah. but yeah, but those first three, three years were uh oh, crazy. i gotta imagine yeah. yeah yeah so and then um and then once you were going through that, did did your dad get to see you get on the job? And, and well, oh yeah, we working, overlapped, right? right yeah. yeah. So he was he was still on. And the you job. guys have the tradition of pinning, uh, right? Do you guys call badge. it pinning? Or yeah, put the badge ceremony, put yeah. the badge on. Yeah. And your dad got to do that yes. for you. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, right. it was very cool. My dad got to do mine too, so uh, it I, it it means the world yeah. that oh, yeah. my father was able to put my uh, my badge on my uniform. Wow. Yeah, yeah, my dad was uh, for. Of the 38 years, probably 35 of those years, he worked narcotics. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, he was uh, – if, if I could be half the police officer he was, that would be doing good. He yeah. definitely was a phenomenal Aww. police officer. No, no, I mean, <laughs> and I've been told that by numerous, numerous people out there. He was very, very good. We were actually in narcotics at the same time. Really? Uh, we would – normally they wouldn't have us working. He was on a different team. Right. Uh, but only one time when I was doing an undercover buy and they, I was wearing a wire and I was buying a kilo and they had the – uh, all the surveillance set up to add more. They had to bring his team on, so he was actually part of the surveillance that one time. Oh, and they God. usually don't like that because if something goes wrong, oh yeah, you know, people, they, family reacts a little differently. Right, right. Uh, oh, but it worked God. out. So yeah, so that was the what a dynamic working together. I mean, seeing your seeing your kid 
out there, you know. But what in what I could only imagine is a giant beard. You look like a like an outlaw from Sons of Anarchy. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, for me, it was uh, less of the beard and more of the um, uh, just like the skinny gangbanger. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. That was your disguise. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> the skinny, the skinny, scrawny. Uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. All right. Well. Yeah. Let's let, well, let's come back to that because um, you talked about. I, uh, I could probably talk to you. For I know. Hours I, about I, the narcotics I, that's, that's thing. Right. I, I, <laughs> if we if we go down that, we'll, we'll never really come back listened. from that, Corey. I, so, I know. It really was a blast, though. Yeah. I mean, just the the things that that would happen and stuff was just very. Well, oh, the, yeah. the you know the reason we forgot to mention in the beginning of the podcast the reason that we actually have you here because we're celebrating um, Police Week. Right. So right. this is, we're basically, we'll call this episode, you know, uh, Chicago's finest stories. Oh. And oh. Uh, you've already, like, knocked the home run out <laughs> with, yeah, right. with that first story. I don't, you know, I, I don't know where we go from there, but um, let's get back to the the newspaper stand guy. Um, so I understand that you guys, like, kind of went out of your way for this guy. And is it true you got you got him an apartment as well you helped him get an apartment and then you guys re refurbished his newsstand to help this guy right, out right yes so what happened was um there's a uh, newsstand right at milwaukee near milwaukee and foster mm. and central there and it has been there i think for 40 or 50 years and it looked like it it was it was really it's right by the your police shape. station yeah mm -hmm. right down the street and uh, it was in real, real bad shape. And when I would be going to work, I'd drive by and I'd just see this, you know, mess of a newsstand. And I never, ever saw it being used. Mm. So uh, one day I'm driving by and I see that there's, um, the door is open. So I spin around and I pull up over there and I look inside and I meet this guy, Anthony, Anthony Johnson. And uh, he says that he only sells papers on Sunday mornings. And uh, so just the once a week, he's just selling the Sunday paper. Uh, but he wasn't selling that much because, as you can imagine, you know, paper newspapers have been kind of dropping off. Right. They just aren't getting them that much anymore. So he would sell there, and he would also sell up at the Blue Line up at Cumberland. Mm -hmm. So I asked if that was his stand, and he said he was just using it, but he had a boss. So he put me in contact with his boss, and I asked if it was okay if we fixed the stand up because it just looked horrible. Mm -hmm. And so he was cool with it. So... I was going to do something with it, and which sometimes happens, I get sidetracked on <laughs> other projects or other things. So yeah. it went a good six months, and I just didn't, uh, you know, do anything with it. I started to check into it a little bit as far as what we had to do, and we were going to have to get, you know, permits, and we were have to. There, there was just going to be this this big ordeal. It seemed like that, and it didn't seem like it was right. going to be uh, easy to get. I done. mean, all while holding four jobs. So <laughs> you know, right. I mean, it's not <laughs> right. not the weirdest thing to get sidetracked. <laughs> right, but but it was uh, so I, I put it on hold. Well, one morning again, I'm driving by and I see Anthony out there mm -hmm. again. So I was like, all right, there's one thing that's going to keep me on track with this. So I get out of my car and I do a Facebook live. Oh. Uh, uh, and I, I wasn't 100% truthful on the Facebook Live. I, uh, I got on there and I said, hey, you know, here we are checking in live over on Milwaukee Avenue, this newsstand. I said, we're going to uh, remodel and we're starting this Saturday. We're going to completely <laughs> gut it. We're going to clean it up and we're going to paint it and we're going to do all this stuff. And, yeah. and we're going we're gonna to create murals for the side of it. And, we're gonna, and I just threw all this stuff out. <laughs> they said that we were going to do yeah. and, and ended it. Well, I had none of that planned. <laughs> Nothing was, but you're shooting as, you know, from the hip. You're shooting when, from the hip. When, when you got when you got manpower, it's it's a like when you've got a, a other people that are like minded like you, it doesn't seem that weird to shoot from the hip and say like you know what I can get a couple guys to help me out and do some this Saturday. You know I got nothing going on. Right. I figured we'd be able to get it together yeah, and, yeah. and and just make it happen. Um, what I didn't expect is what what eventually happened and. I was flooded with with everything from uh, we got you know Tony Galati who's a carpenter he stepped up right away uh, he's he's actually got his own side business called Fix It Now in the neighborhood there yeah oh he's yeah. a handyman and uh, he stepped up right away he was going to be my main carpenter guy who was going to help you know put it all together there uh, people started volunteering that they were going to show up to help help basically gut it and get it cleaned out yeah uh, we had people that were donating businesses over there uh, that were going to donate paint. Uh, True Value that was donating tools. Uh, we had, um, you know, uh, 
wood was donated, uh, roofing was donated, the shingles, uh, I mean, uh, spray foam, insulation, all this stuff just started coming in. Uh, uh, Tony Marino uh, from Marino Jeep, he actually uh, got involved and, and helped out with it. And the, the, the way that what brought them into it was uh, when another person sent a message out to um, uh, Lashak uh, from WGN. Oh, yeah, uh, Marcus Lashak. Yeah, Marcus Lashak. <laughs> Uh, and he reached out to me, and he wanted to do, do a story on it. So when I met him out there, so we were going to do – I did the Facebook Live on a Sunday. We were going to do it the next Saturday. This was the Friday before. Um, he shows up out there, and we're talking to Anthony, and that's when I learned that Anthony was actually an uh, Air Force veteran. And then while they were putting our microphones on and everything, I'm talking to Anthony. I go, well, where do you live? Do you stay here in the neighborhood? And he said, I'm out right now. And he's like, well, what does that mean? I, I didn't catch it right away. Right. Out means that he was homeless. Homeless. homeless and he was actually living in the newsstand. Yeah. So when we learned that, uh, then that's when Marino Jeep uh, got on board. Yeah. and they Peterson and Western, right? No, Marino Jeep is on Irving, just west of Cicero there, or east, actually east of Laramie. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 5100 block there mm. and uh, on Irving. And they, uh, uh, we took Anthony shopping. They bought them all new clothes, clothes to keep them warm for the wintertime, and uh, just – Things the the project then took a different direction. It went from originally it was just to make the stand look nicer, to also make the stand look nicer, but also to help out Anthony. Wow. And one thing led to another. Uh, with the uh, Gladstone Park Neighborhood Association, we set up a GoFundMe, and we started raising money for Anthony. And the goal was to be able to pay for rent for him for uh, one year, mm. uh, to help get him on his feet, to try to connect him with some veterans organizations. Um, uh, another person who is a retired captain out in, she's a foot doctor out in, uh, I don't remember which town it is, should, mm. but this has been a while now, but yeah. uh, she actually helped Kind of put him, you on the spot here. Too. Helped him yeah. out with his feet, yeah. Uh, so just so many people just came together to help out. We were actually able to get him a, a place to stay and pay his rent, and we were actually able to do it for two years. Wow. wow. Um, so uh, that money just ran out a few months ago, and he was paying on his own for a little bit now. So uh, I oh, have to follow up with him to see where he's at right now. But, yeah. uh, um, you know, he, he was able to get a good opportunity for two years to get himself on his feet. And Chief O'Neill's actually stepped up. And every Sunday after their brunch, mm -hmm. they package up what they have left over and they give it to Anthony. And then he takes it and he goes and he shares it with other people in need. Wow. I don't know if you guys ever had that brunch over there, um, but it's ridiculous. Yeah. They got everything over there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you packed up everything at the end of that brunch, you probably could live for a year just on the leftovers of that that brunch. That brunch is ridiculous. Yeah. You know, and we're our so without getting too much into it, you know, you guys know that I I ran for office a few times in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. and in running for office, I developed and grew this network uh, on on Facebook. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just it's there. I've got you know five thousand friends right. uh, on Facebook, plus another 3,000 that follow, and then we've got all these other pages. So we probably have about 10,000 people on the northwest side of Chicago and beyond yeah. uh, that are part of this this network yeah. that was developed from, so we can say if there's one good thing that has come out of politics, uh, of course, I, I didn't win anything, <laughs> but it developed this giant network yeah. of people that, you know, whenever we come up with an idea to do something and I present it out there, they they jump on board right away. Right. And it's, it's just helped with everything we've got. And, and the business owners in the area are, are phenomenal. You've got Jamie Morales from Allstate Insurance or Dan Chilino from Wintrust Bank. Um, you've just got, uh, with, with all of these things, look, you've got Clint from uh, the Lake Effect Brewery. Right. You've got let's, Stephanie from Fanny's. Let's try to get a hold of Clint again. Yeah, try to call him. It's just, I, the list can go on and on. Yeah. Uh, Tony Marino over the Jeep. Right. Uh, and I, I know I'm, say I'm not saying like somebody's Not to yet. sound, uh, hopefully I don't look over. Oh. Go ahead. Um, hopefully I don't look overly, um, you know, uh, starstruck, but like I, me and my wife, we both grew up in the neighborhood. Um, we, my wife went to Taft. Um, she went to Farnsworth. Hello. Hi, Clint. This oh. is uh, Vince with Chicago's Finest Stories. How are you? We're here with John Garrido. Good. Sorry for Good. playing a uh, phone tag with you. We're uh, actually drinking your beer right now as we speak. Uh, it's some, uh, It's excellent. It's excellent. Thank you for doing this. Well, good, good. I'm actually brewing it today. That's why I was so busy running around trying to to um, I was teaching one of my brewers uh, how to brew the beer today. So, 
Okay, uh, your, uh, tell uh, tell us a little bit yeah. about your brewery and the beer that we're drinking right now. Yeah, um, well, first of all, the beer is uh, it's really just meant to be a uh, a very nice drinkable uh, beer. It's not. It's a very simple kind of less is more approach uh, to to the beer, um, but it's also but it's made with really really good ingredients, some the best ingredients. So it's we're using the finest German malt, and um, we also have uh, uh, really good hops in it as well. And it's yeah, it's basically just for you to have a, a few at a time and uh, carry on a conversation. Uh, it's about 5%. And um, that's just really what, what it's all about, like something to grill with, something to sit out in the sun with, and, um, yeah, and just enjoy. And, uh, yeah, definitely uh, for being simple, it does have a rich malt flavor. Um, you might pick up, you know, an apple note or a pear note, you know, from – that's uh, from the yeast and the hops, and um, but other than that, it's just supposed to be pretty smooth, and you know, it's meant to drink. So, yeah, Clint, this is honestly the um, best Miller Lite I've ever had. <laughs> so, Clint, yeah, it's how... like a really rich old style. It's like a, it's like a really good old old style. Is what I so in all I honesty, how it. how insulted were you when John asked you to make a Miller Lite for him? <laughs> You know, I mean, I kind of had, I say, yeah, I'll, you know, I like light drinkable beers. I, I usually go for lagers myself. And, um, yeah, I was like, fine, but we're going to, you know, put a little bit more of a fuller flavor twist on it. And um, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> well, can uh, you tell people but, where uh, they can get yeah. this beer? Yeah, right now um, the beer is, it's available on our website through the brewery, um, and that's www.lakeeffectbrewing.com. Uh, we are between batches right now. We're currently sold out of the first two batches, but um, on June 1st, we're, we have another big packaging run, and we'll have a lot uh, for that. Uh, we will expand some stores, and we will expand the region of the of the distribution right now um just the garage and beer on the wall have uh cases of it where you can buy there beer on the wall is in park ridge like right by the train station and then um, the garage is you know up at milwaukee and elston and uh but we, we will be branching out to uh, some of the other stores uh but uh, for right now it's 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 most easily um, ordered on, on our website. Okay. Uh, and if you live on the northwest side, not too far from the brewery, we'll we'll deliver it. Um, but yeah, we'll we're going to be making the beer year round. You know, for the whole year, we're going to try and have a couple of batches every two weeks. And so uh, this this beer will get around. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, but, we wanted uh, to we'll, say thanks for what you're doing. Uh, the cause that um you're you're helping is it means a lot to us here at this podcast so thank you very much um from uh, a couple yeah. of first responders here it uh it, it really means a lot that you're actually doing this and on top of it the beer is pretty amazing too so uh thank you so much yeah. for doing that well, i know I you want to get back to your uh to your brewing i've already <laughs> we've already been playing uh uh, tag here a couple times pulling you away from your work over there yeah, yeah. i know you're like seriously in the middle of a batch right now so um we'll let you get back to yeah, it but this uh, batch, this beer. <laughs> uh yeah. www.lakeeffectbrewing.com um to get your yep. beer for uh people who want to uh, get it and depending on your location you might be able to deliver it available at the garage and we're, what's the place in park ridge called beer on the wall beer on the wall in park ridge Okay, well, thank you, Clint, um, very much. Uh, um, we appreciate everything you do. All right, appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for having me on. Thank Take you. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. All right. So just to give you an idea, we, I, when, we, when I first talked to him about doing this, we wanted to make sure that we had a, a lot of beer ready to go. Oh, but yeah. at the same time, you never know how it's going to, you know, how it's going to, 
take. Yeah. Take, right. So we, d- we also didn't want a lot of beer just sitting in, in stock here, right? right? Uh, I mean, for example, every year we do T-shirts for Rock the Badges, and I probably have hundreds of T-shirts yeah. left over because we they, ordered too many. Yeah, and um, thanks for bringing those out, John. Those are super nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So with the beer, we wanted to make sure we had it well. So uh, Clint decided to just to pre-release, just to throw it up on online. Yeah. Well, within hours of that, I started getting messages. Hey, check out this new beer they just started doing. And, stuff. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's really cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they he sold out of his first batch in less than, I think, 15 hours. Oh, my God. I mean, which is 60, yeah. 60 cases of beer. Uh, just It just went immediately like that. And then the next batch, it just, it, as they come up. So, I mean, it's actually... Uh, just trying to catch up. They're now running, like you just said, they're going to start doing two batches a week. Yeah. You know, to try I was to just stay saying, I think me and it. Steve got in on the first order and. First order from the second and, batch, probably. Yeah, yeah. And Vince, you were able to actually sneak in and, and grab a couple on your own, which is awesome. Um, yeah, no, it's, but it's uh, great. I mean, the, just the response say, has actually, been amazing. And it actually tastes really good too. Well, which it just is really did. Cool. well because right. And, for for considering that he's selling out like that without anybody even tasting the beer, just just right. goes to show just that uh, the the cause is is that important, oh, yeah, yeah. right? You know, and especially recently we've lost uh, police officers and firefighters uh, and even county sheriffs to this COVID, um, so it, it's it's even that much more meaningful. Yeah, right it's now. been it's been a it's been a hit for sure. Yeah, um, you guys, uh, I mean, us two on our side. Um, Right before the COVID hit, we were losing a lot of guys unprecedentedly, in my opinion, to suicide. Like us too, and it it yeah. it, it kind of seems like that came out of nowhere. The um, like the amount, the any, any yeah, ideas I, you on? know, I, uh, I've been on twenty nine years, and we've had uh, officers. You know, it, it's been something that happens. All the time. I mean, we just, you know, the first responders have a high suicide rate. Right. Uh, I know as a fellow officer and as a supervisor, it's, it's extremely, um, it's frustrating because I feel like we don't know what to do or how to stop it. Right. And, and we're, you know, as I think it's in our DNA, right, to help. We're high That's level we problem do. solvers. We, and, right. Right. We fix things. Yeah. Mm. And this, I don't know how to fix it. I, we, we, we don't know how to fix it. And, and we try different things, uh, but it's still, uh, you know, getting, you know, here, go to counseling, right? Yeah. Right. Like, no, I don't need counseling. I'm right. good. I don't need it. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm okay. Um, but, but a lot, a lot of guys and girls just aren't okay. And it's uh, to try to get that out there. I don't know how you fix it. I don't right. know what you do. There's. Um, and those are the ones that, that you can maybe see that there's a problem. Sometimes you can, sometimes you know. can't. Yeah. Right. And that's the thing. You just sometimes you never know. You'll you'll hear about it or, or somebody will do something like that and you'll be like, No way. I, yeah. I how in the world and no warning signs, no indicators, just no. out of left field. There there was an issue. No. And uh yeah, it's mm. it's just a weird thing. I just don't know um I don't know how you fix it. We're, yeah. Well we'll we'll keep putting the word out there. We just keep trying. I mean you know, we're eventually going to get to people. I mean, you know? we, uh, you know, and I, I know as soon as you say something like what I'm about to say, you'll have guys who are just like, oh, man, are you nuts? We're not going to do that. You know, right. but you almost have to, just like every year we have to go to the range and qualify, yeah. maybe quarterly you have to just require that first responders have to go sit with a counselor. Right. Whether they sit there and say nothing mm. for an hour, then they say nothing for an hour or whatever. It, but... It, but maybe there's that one guy that'll or girl that'll open up and say something, right? They're gonna start talking. And, and that's mean, just it, you know. If you, it's kind of like you know, it's kind of like um, you know, just day to day calls that we get. You may not be saving someone's life or pulling someone out of a fire or, um, you know, flipping someone over on an EMS call or or um, working to help someone as a police officer. But like, maybe once a day you do. Maybe once a week you do, and that's really kind of the reason that we, I guess, we do it. You know, is yeah. that you get that one opportunity, the one situation where it comes up where you can help. Right. Yeah. I mean, if it's just one person, right. then it's worth it, right? Yeah. Well, that's just it, right? So, uh, and you know, and you'll probably it'll be 
the guy that uh, says he doesn't need it and then and is the loudest talker at roll call about sure. it, but he's probably the guy talking the entire 60 minutes he's in that room. <laughs> right. You know, right. which yeah. is fine. Uh, so That's that, what you that want. way you put everybody in the same boat, right? We're right. all, it's like, okay, there's we no all stigma have to, to it. Con- right. We all mm-hmm. have to go to counseling. We have to do it. It's part of the process. Yeah. Um, Since I'm here, might as well say what's on my mind. <laughs> exactly. I've got grievances to air. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, but I, but, Again, yeah. I, I don't know if that's the end all either. Who knows? Right. Uh, but and and I'm sure unions would have something to say about it. If yeah. gonna start I mean, it it, sh- it shouldn't be that hard of a fight for something that important. I agree. In my opinion, um, let's uh, let's move on to something. Not yeah, as, let's as let's tragic. talk about some more depressing stuff. <laughs> so, what about like dead animals or injured <laughs> animals? Is there? Anything- <laughs> well, I, I wanted to get into. Let, let's go ahead and jump into your. Uh, your stray, your rescue um, uh, foundation that you got. Um, yeah, we were we were actually talking about this just before it started. I, it's it's not often me and my wife find common ground. Um, it, rarely, really. And um, we were uh, we were talking again. We've going back to what I was saying. We've both grown up in the neighborhood. Um, I went to Oriole Park. My wife went to uh, Farnsworth. I, we, we were both local city kids in that neighborhood, which is phenomenal. And I had just rattled off your resume to my wife about all the things you've done in the community. And she's like, no idea who you're talking about. And I'm like, oh, um, you know, Johnny's also done a lot in the community. He's done this. And, and I'm like, oh, he, he also has a stray, um, stray dog rescue. And she's like, oh, are you talking about John? I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's who I'm talking about. And like, she just knew everything. She railed off a whole bunch of stuff, like just but off the top of your head. It's with not her. just a rush, it, right? You reunite. Um, right, right. So yeah. um, my wife and I started this Stray Rescue Foundation. Um, and and ultimately what the what the primary focus of our, our rescue is to get stray animals back home to their families. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it just worked, again, with that, that same network that I have, mm-hmm. uh, what we started doing was posting animals on Facebook that would come into the police station. And when we post them, we were finding that, that they would get, we'd find their owners right away. Uh, cause All it would get through, social media. through social media. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and because I mean, generally a dog can wander pretty far, Yeah. but in an urban setting, they don't usually get very far. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if somebody's driving down the street, they see a cat, they're like, Oh, I don't know. Indoor cat, outdoor cat. Right. They're not sure. Right. They see a dog next to, you know, they're stopping traffic. Especially yeah. if it has a collar on and oh, yeah, like yeah right. So, so generally they're they're from the neighborhood, and since the network that I have is on the northwest side, it just really worked. Mm-hmm. It just worked. We were just getting them home. So, uh, we actually figured out we've got about a, anywhere from eighty-two to eighty-six percent return to owner rate, which wow. is if you compare it to animal control and by no fault of their own, um, it's just because animal control is at twenty-seven hundred Southwestern, and people just either don't think to go there or whatever. Yeah, uh, they're at like twenty-three percent. Mm-hmm. return to owner rate so it it really really did work uh mm-hmm. in that process and then when these animals would come in some of them would either be super matted and they need grooming so we'd reach out to our friends at the uh the dog house it's a groomer up on uh, milwaukee and devon mm-hmm. and they would give them a spa day and, and clean them up for us and and take care of them and then they would also actually hold on to them sometimes for a period of time for yeah. us uh yeah. and then uh they would need medical attention so mm-hmm. we were going to our our um, good friend who recently passed away, Dr. Sackis, up yeah. at Niles Animal Hospital. Uh, he was our vet, and he would just uh, uh, kind of run a tab for us. He would give us a discount, sometimes not charge us for anything, but he'd run a tab for us, and then when you know, whenever we could, we would pay it down. Yeah, and you guys were in the same line of work. We yeah. were both trying to get the same thing accomplished. Right, and this whole thing just, just evolved uh, slowly over time. And uh, let's see, we, we became official in 2007, and we've been averaging about 300 dogs and a couple, about a dozen cats a year. Wow. That, that would come through. Is Freddie a rescue? rescue? Freddie is. Freddie was, uh, he was found on the west side. He was starving. He, um, he couldn't, uh, he couldn't even, he could barely stand. He was so emaciated. Really? And uh, we were. Do you know what kind of well, dog Freddie is? Freddie is a, uh, we did his DNA and it came back that he's a um, Asian breed mix and part strapper sire terrier and a few other things in there. So I'm not mm. sure, but he's about 
hundred percent cute, which is the only thing that saves, <laughs> that saves him for the things that he gets into. He's a puppy still. He's a year and a half. So I look at him just chilling on the couch. Oh, yeah, just, see. Right just, now he is. Just yeah. warm himself out right away. Start out strong <laughs> and just shut it down. Yeah. So he's our foster fail. We, we say, you know, when, cause a foster, you're supposed to take the animal in, hold on to him until we can get somebody to adopt and then they move on. Yeah. That's Typically well, what I, foster is, but a foster fail means <laughs> it never leaves your house. Right. Have you ever That's heard it. of He's Stray's halfway house? No. My dad was part of that, and he would take a dog in, and I think it, like you, they pass some, they pass a dog along like to each people in this this network. They hold on to the dog for thirty days while they're trying to f- place this dog. So whenever the dogs would wind up at my dad's house, he winds up keeping them. Right, right. That's how. So we he wound up with like ten dogs. I'm like, Dad, that's not how this works. <laughs> exactly. You know, you're, he's like, he feels like when the dog winds up, he's won the lottery. You know, right. Dad is my dog. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. He's like, yeah, but uh, we're attached. Ah, you know, it's my dog now. It's my buddy. Yeah, he's my buddy. <laughs> Go get me another beer. <laughs> well, that's what we joke. We have an 82 percent return to order rate and a 98 percent foster fail rate because they almost <laughs> never leave anybody's houses. Oof. Um, I tell you though, the 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 way that it actually began. And that's, we definitely want to talk to you about that because these about, stories are, yeah. Pedro? Is yeah. that where you're going to go with it? Because that that was, I was saving that one for. Oh, we can wait. For, <laughs> no, let, I, I, I can't wait. Yeah. Can't wait? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go into that. So start from this the beginning. This might be better than the story where you got beat up on the, on the West Beat side. up and shot at, yeah. Right, people are going to be like, no, I don't want to hear about where you were shot at. Tell, tell us about Pedro. <laughs> well, I tell you, that that's the, the funny thing is uh, where people, like you said, like with your wife, yeah. you know, no idea, you know, newsstand. No, I don't know who had to do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, police officer, okay, lawyer, yeah, whatever, everything. Dog rescue, oh my wow. God. <laughs> but I was shot at, for God's sake. Yeah, no, nah, so what? <laughs> this was 2014? Yes. Okay. So uh, when, uh, so for our organization, the, the, the true heart and soul of it is my wife. Uh, mm-hmm. I, you know, I happen to be, because of the social media and stuff, kind of the, the face of it, but uh, she's the one that's the, the real heart to it. Yeah. So here, I can't even kill an insect that's in the house. <laughs> Flies, I have to capture them, live release. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, ladybugs were up in a window sill, and I captured them in a, in a glass, and I was walking downstairs, and I stepped on a, uh, a plug for a cell phone that was face up and it went into the bottom of my foot and I had to literally bleeding hobble out to the back door to release the ladybug before I could seek treatment for myself. So we don't kill animals or anything, insects, yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, so when we go on vacation, we'd always uh, try to find, we wouldn't try, they'd always be around animals that needed help yeah. and then we would help them out, get them some food if they need medical attention and whatnot. So this one particular vacation in 2014, we went to uh, San Pedro, Belize. And uh, just walking down the beach, this was day two, I think, that we were there of five days. And uh, this Doberman starts following both of us, but more so starts following my wife, Anna. So I'm taking pictures. Oh, look, here, this dog's following us, yeah, right? Yeah. And then we, we leave the beach and we go into town. And uh, I go into a grocery store to buy food. We feed the dog food there on the street. Uh, and then he still continues to follow us. Well, we noticed that somebody looked like they, in some archaic way, tried to neuter him by wrapping a string, a tight string or something, around his oh, testicles. So, yeah, so didn't look good yeah. and looked like he needed medical help. So right. by the time we were able to find the vet, the vet was closed. So we brought him to our, snuck him into our hotel room. And at that point, that's when Anna named him Pedro, and I knew that I was in trouble because as soon as your wife names, <laughs> once you know, once the name comes out, once yeah, committed. once once they name the dog, it's yours. It's mm-hmm. over. It's yeah. game over. Any pet, actually, yeah. once it's named. Right. We had a pigeon named Gabriel, which I can tell you about later. <laughs> uh, One winged pigeon. Oh god. It used his other wing like Zorro. But, oh. Uh, no. <laughs> anyway, so back yeah. to uh, Pedro. So yeah. she named him Pedro. So um, the next day, we were going to take him to the vet, and it was suggested to us by uh, one of the uh, people in the restaurant there at the resort. Whoa, whoa. Said, uh, yeah, said, uh, you know, there's a humane society that's right there across the street from the vet. Maybe go there first. Mm-hmm. So we went there, and they immediately knew the dog. They said, yes, this dog uh, escaped from here a few days ago. You know, we're taking the dog back. So this poor guy was like a repeat offender. Yeah, right, right, right. So we pointed out what somebody had done to him, and they said that was them. 
that did that. Oh my! They were the gosh. ones that they, set them up I, that I way. I think you you do that so that you cut the blood flow off, right. and then it eventually. I f- think they do it on calves, right? Cows. Yeah, yeah, yeah cows I was gonna say that. I've heard but, that. But when they're when they're like real babies, little. yeah, real little. This yeah. dog was two years old. Yeah. Oh my god! It's too late. It's, ho- it's right. horrible. It's too late yeah. for that. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So, uh, what they were doing, I don't know, but so they they basically take the dog from us and send us on our way. Well. Anna's hysterical. And not letting things not, go. No, 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 no. So she's like, all right, we're going to go uh, buy food and, and bring everything back there to, you know, and bring him. So we do that. Uh, we come back about an hour and a half later. And while I'm talking to the, the woman there, Anna's looking at the cages because she hears some noise coming from one of the cages, like a sound like a dog crying. And it was Pedro in there laying on his side, just wailing in pain. Uh, what they had done while we were gone is they castrated them and just sewed them back up. So it looked pretty bad. He didn't look like he was doing very well. So uh, Anna offered a $100 donation to them to let us take the dog so we could take it to the vet across the street because they didn't have a vet on the premises. Uh, oh, my gosh. It was the, one of the people who did it was just one of the workers that worked yeah. there. It wasn't even a vet. Jeez. Did the process. So we got, the, uh, got Pedro across the street to the vet. And from there, uh, the vet said that he wouldn't have lasted another 24 hours. So meanwhile, I was putting this all on Facebook. So some friends of ours uh, that, that follow us on Facebook, uh, uh, Patty Culleton, mm-hmm. she asked if she can do a GoFundMe to help cover his medical expenses. She does, and within 24 hours, we raised $2,500 for his care. Wow. So we start that process. Uh, so by the end of the week, uh, going there to visit him, uh, we decide that we want to figure out how to take him with us. Yeah. Which, which can't be an easy task to move him across because it's international. No, correct. So the the first part of it is is that you have to wait 30 days from the date of the rabies shots. He's got to be, he's got to stay in the country of origin mm-hmm. until that process is up. So we had to leave him there. It, it made a much more expensive vacation trip, that's for sure. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did. So we had to leave him there. Uh, but thankfully, uh, the the people that from the... Um, the restaurant there, they had a friend named Jack who uh, agreed to take Pedro hold in guys, and yeah. hold on to him for the month that we were trying to figure out how to get him back. Right. But then it was still trying to figure out how to do it and how to get him back because there's uh, this was in May, so there was uh, there's flight restrictions. You can only fly live animals during certain months because it gets too hot really? in, yeah. in the cargo Makes area. Sense. Yeah. Uh, so it was restricted. We couldn't we couldn't bring him on the plane. Um, somebody suggested that we make him a service dog and bring him in, but oh, him in yeah, I don't know if a 70 pound Doberman right. sitting in the cabin right. Right. would have gone over well, <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah, and we didn't want to abuse couple that. couple reasons it might not make him. Yeah, right, right. We didn't want to abuse that anyway. Yeah. Um, so then literally I'm, I'm scouring Facebook and we're trying to come up with ways and ideas. Uh, we, we even thought of maybe taking and getting him over to Cuba and then somehow from Cuba to Florida. We, uh, oh, uh, I remember typing one time saying, does anybody have a small plane that wants to go on a short adventure to Mexico? And <laughs> yeah, yeah. then I realized how that sounded. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Can you hold on to these kilos for me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For a friend. <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh, <laughs> all right. So. Oh, it's cool. I'm a Chicago police officer. Yeah, no, no, it's all good. <laughs> No, 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 it's a dog. <laughs> Pedro isn't cold for anything. Yeah, no, no, it's literally a, an animal. <laughs> yeah. So what we come up with, uh, some friends of ours, uh, Phyllis Bober, she online introduces me to a guy named um, Hector who runs a uh, rescue down in Cancun. Okay. So what we end up doing yeah, is... We're getting closer. We're getting, getting closer, closer. <laughs> right? So the, what we end up working out is uh, our friends down in San Pedro, Belize, we're going to take a two-hour boat ride from San Pedro to um, the border of Mexico, yeah. and they were going to meet us at the southern border of Mexico. My father and I were going to fly to Cancun, meet Hector and his 82-year-old father, and rent a car. And the four of us were going to drive two hours south to the border mm-hmm. to meet them. And I read that your father is 70 at this point, right? At this point, yes. Yeah, because yeah, he's said to be 76 this year, which I'm not allowed to say publicly. <laughs> no. He still wants to be 32. But... Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, my dad is 76 going on 19. Oh, yeah. Um, he's just a wild man. Yeah. Yeah, I got a similar situation going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we... Uh, we end up doing that. We so the first hope is is that we're not going to be kidnapped at the airport, right? Because we're just trusting 
you know, but but man, a lot of people, a lot has to go. A lot has to go right. But, but man, Hector and his father talk about two uh, great, great guys, uh, and Hector's wife Carla. I, I mean, it was just we met these people just, and the only common thing that we had was our love for animals, and it just really, really, it, just it, it was just perfect. Off and perfect. So the four of us, we take the car and we drive down, and Anna had mapped it out for us because they said it's not good to travel at night in Mexico. So we had to get from one point to a hotel during daylight hours, and then the hotel had to also accept animals. Right. So she maps out a way. We were going to go along the Gulf Coast, and then we were told there were, like, pirates and other <laughs> Other, you know, uh, cartels and all kinds of things going there. It's, it's like a Disney movie, right? It is. Oh, yeah. I think they're called banditos. Mm. Bandito, yeah, the, the banditos. Uh, we are told how they'll they'll have scouts at gas stations and uh, that right. if they, they see your target, they'll call ahead and then they'll do a roadblock. Right. And then, then carjack you or kidnap you or whatever they're going and to the, do. The 2014, like, there's a lot of, that, there's a lot of uh, cartel wars going yes. on at that time. Right. Right. So... You never know what side you're gonna wind up. Yeah, it was a be, bad idea. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> from the to beginning. Be very clear. <laughs> <laughs> to be very clear. If you're going to Mexico, go to your resort and stay at your resort. Yeah. It's not a good idea to travel through the right. the, the middle of a uh, looking for stray canines. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very different place yeah. than you know if you're used to that you know resort and you know uh, senior frogs and oh, all yeah. that stuff. It's, oh yeah. It's it's not the same once you're out. No. In the middle. Of that. So, uh, so we, we, we do it. And the whole way I was just, um, posting updates on Facebook. People were actually able to track and see how fast we were driving. I, there was an app that we had and, uh, thank God someone was tracking you on the way. They, they were tracking us. <laughs> yeah. And it was cool. We, uh, uh, we only got ripped off once. So there was yeah, a tell, tell us about that. Block. Cause you, you actually ran into a roadblock and got yes. basically mugged. Basically, right, right, right. Yeah, they, uh, they, they all have these these rifles, and they they pull us off into the roadblock, and they uh, get us out of the car. And I was afraid because I don't know how, you know. First of all, we were lucky that this Doberman was going to get into this small car with four guys and not just rip us to shreds. Right. But then they went to get out, and then just to have him not go after one of these guys with the gun, oh, and yeah. then. You know, it just add to an already volatile situation. I tell you, that was the one time where it was we had a very real conversation in the car that between the four of us, we had one dog and a knife. From the old days, right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like I, I can imagine that your dad that going through that is not the happiest character. Like when this is all going down, like it, that's got to be a hard pill for him. To it swallow, was hard right? for him to hold back. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, because. Just the uh, the idea of what was happening, just definitely, he was it was infuriating oh, yeah. for him. Yeah. Uh, so thankfully, it uh, you know Pedro remained calm and didn't get in trouble. And uh, I because I actually had the, uh, the the phone on recording some of it, so During you can this. hear. Uh, and one of the the officers comes up and speaks to me in Spanish, and I am not fluent in Spanish. I, <laughs> so I, and I and I remember thinking at the time. We didn't want anybody to know that we were from the United States because we figured it'd be better if they just think that we're locals. Right. And when I listen back at here, I'm speaking in Spanish and English <laughs> to the guy, and I'm saying words that are definitely not even Spanish words. You, <laughs> or I, English I, words. I, <laughs> right. yeah, I don't think you had them fooled at that point. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> they, 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 they knew. Um, but it, it worked out. They just took it some money. It was as simple as just giving them money. and then, They uh, just took the money and went on. Okay. And, not, and, I mean, let us go. things could have been way worse. So, yeah. Right. right. You know, it's like anything, you know, like we tell people here, uh, just give them whatever it is that they're You can always they replace want. the money, right? Yeah, you can replace the money yeah. in property. You can't replace yourself. So now mm-hmm. at this point, you're in Mexico? When Still this in happened? Mexico, yeah. And now you're, you're, your plan from there was just to drive to where? To the border of Texas. Okay. And so you were going to drive the length of Mexico? At, at we that did point? drive the length of Mexico. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was the plan, the, the southern tip. And how's and to, how and how's Pedro doing at this this point? Like so, you know, he uh, he did amazingly well. I mean, he was. Uh, I think he knew he. You know, animals seem to know when they're being helped, right? And uh, they remain on their good good and best behavior until they're helped, and then their true colors <laughs> <laughs> come out once they're uh, in a safe environment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I'm referring to little Freddy little over here, who's <laughs> chewed through our fence. Oh man. <laughs> It's part and of being a puppy. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah. you, it's acceptable losses. You're, you're gonna lose some valuable stuff if you take on, you know, uh, 
you know the responsibility of taking on a new puppy. You, you just got to make sure you got your sports posters up and hung on the wall and that. Uh, yeah, it. you're you're gonna lose shoes a hundred percent. Remote control. Shoes. Yeah, remote controls are big. Yeah. 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 Oof. Couch, couch. Uh, yes. Oh, couch. Yeah, no, you can't go through that. That's just gonna be. You might as well, cushions. might as well have yeah. your Italian grandmother's furniture in your house at that point. <laughs> With the plastic over it. Oh yeah, yeah. just yeah. keep it going. Yeah. So um, you guys, so, yeah, you so guys we made, made it to it Texas. Made it. We, yeah, we. And, and thankfully, because uh, my father is 100 percent Mexican, so he's fluent in Spanish. So because uh, we were stopped a total of three times, uh, they only took the money from us the one time, uh, but he was able to pretty much talk his talk our way out of. Uh, everything the last guy got us we're literally uh not like 30 minutes from the border and we get pulled over again we're like ah really <laughs> and so close yeah and the guy comes back and tells us no nah, you're gonna have to follow me to a station that's like an hour south oh. of where we are and and we're thinking like screw we are that. not screw this guy we, yeah. anywhere right. you know so isn't that rule number one like you're not supposed to leave <laughs> no so uh but that was the only time that my father was like, you know what? He identified. He said, you know, that we're both police officers from the United States. And he thought that we were close enough to the border that maybe that would have had some type of impact. And that officer was fine with it. He was cool. He was like, oh, okay, no problem. You know, and, yeah. and let us go. Huh. Uh, so we made it. So Anna and our friend Mike, uh, they actually drove down from Chicago uh, to meet us at the border. And uh, we actually met on our wedding anniversary. Oh, yeah. what so a romantic. I put a little red ribbon on Pedro. And, oh, did you? So yeah, yeah. So Anna actually crossed over into Mexico and met us on the Mexico side. And uh, Wow, yeah, what, so. a, what a slow build to this anniversary present. Yeah, right. You are romantic. <laughs> so, what, so you guys made it back with Pedro. Well, crossing the border. So, you know, I'm thinking, how am I going to present this? Because we're going to have to deal with United States Customs. Right. And they're going to be like, all right, let me get this straight. <laughs> right. You and your father <laughs> flew each with like a backpack right. to Cancun, Mexico, right. picked up this dog that looks like it had a recent surgical procedure. Yeah. And drove it through the middle of Mexico to cross at another border. Right. Yeah. And, and there's yeah. not drugs inside yeah. of it. Go, go to line B, <laughs> right. line B, please, for the uh, x-ray and right. the... Uh, yeah, Ooh. cavity search. We are the two worst drug dealers ever, <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah, so thankfully um, what Pedro had, though, was some uh, real bad injuries on his ears. It almost looked like somebody took maybe a cigar or something and, like, burned his ears. Oh, so while we're there with the uh, uh, the customs officer, hmm. he's going through our documents. He's looking, he says, what's with the dog? And uh, so I just tell him, oh, I, he's a rescue dog. And go, he goes, what happened to his ears? I said, you know, we think somebody might have, you know, burned his ears with cigars or something like that. And he just shook his head. Thank God he was an animal lover. <laughs> he shook his head. He's furious. He's like, get that dog to safety. And sent us right through. We were like, Aww. oh, thank God. Every so, once in a while it works out. Yeah. So wow. we, we crossed over and, uh, and we were set. And then it was uh, home from there. Yeah. And then that's what... Uh, because Fueled that network was uh, added to the network that I already All had right. because yeah. so many people started following that. So he actually has his own Facebook page called My Name is Pedro. And uh, Pedro's still with us? Pedro's still with us. Yeah? Yeah, he's going to be nine years old this year. Wow. Yeah. So uh, I remember when we started this uh, Facebook page, I would post on there, that, like the early posts would be, mm -hmm. uh, today Pedro did this or we did that or, you know, whatever. Uh, and then Anna was like, no, 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 you got to post it like as if Pedro's talking. And I was like, <laughs> I go, I'm not doing that. I'm not posting like I'm I, the dog. All right. I, I mean, Pedro doesn't talk, doesn't speak. He doesn't. I, I'm not, I'm not above a lot of things, but I will not take the place of a dog. I said, I'm, not, I, I'm not doing that. And she's like, no, 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 you got to do it. So, and you got to do a Mexican accent. <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> so uh, she started doing that way. And then people started to respond and talk to they Pedro. wanted to talk to Pedro of course they wanted to talk to Pedro so now I post like I'm Pedro <laughs> oh do you <laughs> I knew you would <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. love knows no bounds no no no, no. <laughs> so yeah so Pedro posts it's actually Pedro he uses pause and he posts all the posts uh, and everything he's very good at taking pictures and whatnot and yeah so um, um, Pedro's got his own page matter of fact several of our rescues now have it's almost like if you had um, Chicago PD or the Chicago Fire, and then you branched off to Chicago PD and then Chicago Med. And we've got my name is Pedro, <laughs> and we've got my name is Ethan. There's another dog. We got my name is I, Frank. 
Yeah. Yeah. So we've got. I was, I was actually, I definitely do want to talk about Ethan because that story is amazing. Yes. But um, yeah, no, we, we've always owned, uh, or my wife has always owned Chihuahuas. And then once we got married, it, obviously nothing about me. You know, that, <laughs> yeah. that never, she, so she just kept them buying Chihuahuas. And um, they've <laughs> all had, again, purely because of ethnicity, they've all been, you know, I think we had Chico. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> like, they're, you got to keep on with uh, with the ethnic names. So with um, with Ethan, that was another amazing story, if, if you got time for it. I don't know. Yeah, so so the rescue, as we said, the, the focus is getting animals back home to their families and mm-hmm. taking care of them, giving them whatever medical attention, whatever they need, and keeping them safe while we're doing that. Yep. And then those that can't get home, we find new homes for them. Mm-hmm. Well, with Ethan, that took us in another direction as well. So now we have another branch of the rescue, and mm-hmm. that's um, animal advocacy uh, against animal abuse. Right. So um, Ethan officers got called, Chicago police officers in the 16th district were called to uh, an address over the midnight shift. Mm -hmm. The woman says uh, there was a tenant who lived in the the attic apartment and he moved out three weeks earlier. She said that she heard something up there. It sounded like scratching. She didn't know what it was, but nobody's supposed to be up there. Mm -hmm. So she was afraid. She didn't know if somebody had gotten in, a squatter was in there or what. Right. So the officers go up there and they find this dog who we now call Ethan. And Ethan was uh, the worst I've ever seen as far as uh, uh, near death. Uh, when the officers brought this dog back into the station, uh, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't even lift his head up. He was literally just bones. Um, he was probably about the time maybe six to eight months old, and he was uh, literally moaning in pain from, oh. from the starvation. What type of dog? Uh, he's a uh, an American bully. He's like a little uh, um, pit bull bulldog mix, you know. So, mm-hmm. uh, so I remember thinking that I didn't think he was gonna survive the the car ride from in my squad car from the station to the animal hospital. That bad, huh? He was bad. Well, and, and do you, does CPD have an actual protocol for what they do with dogs like this? Is there? A, Something that you guys yes, and I violate it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> is I would imagine it's just call animal control. And yeah. So yeah. when when this all it's it's evolved a little bit. So when when this all started, the what, what the department policy basically is uh, when an animal comes in, gets inventoried, and then uh, gets sent to animal control within eight hours, if possible. If animal control doesn't come out within the eight hours, then we're supposed to call them again to remind them and try to get them out. So that's the policy. They come in and they go to animal control. Since we started our rescue, we've able to, been able to get the, the policy modified a little bit. And what the policy is now is the same, but either it goes to animal control or it can go to a stray hold approved rescue. So animal control has the ability to um, make rescues stray hold approved. So there's only a few that are stray hold approved and that's like Paws Chicago, Animal Welfare League, uh, Treehouse, and us. Okay. Uh, Greater Stray Rescue Foundation is straight hold approved. I think those are better options. So, so what it allows the officers to do, as opposed to just sending to animal control, um, we can divert these dogs or cats uh, to other rescues. At least you know one of those four rescues uh, that can help. It, it does so many different things. One, it gives the uh, a little bit of relief to animal control that's just bombarded with all these animals coming in every day. Uh, and it also gives these animals just the, that uh, a second chance to not be in the environment because a lot of animals that go to animal control, they have the potential of getting sick because there's usually, on average, there about 300 dogs a day mm. that are there. They, they maintain usually. Now, because of the pandemic, there's a weird thing going on. There's only about 50 dogs there. Everybody's not Is that really? a concern with the dogs? Like not it? losing their dogs, and they're adapting and fostering, and everybody's at home. So right. they're taking, I just hope that it, when it goes back to normal, these dogs don't end up back out again. Back in the system, yeah. But, uh, so that that's the policy. So the, the dogs should come in and then go right to animal control. Who's that? Somebody's, oh, is, is that, that me? Uh, is that this oh, thing? that's you. You can just do the side thing. Right there. Oh, you're getting a phone call? Yeah. No, let's record it. All right. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, uh... Real you professional get, operation we got. Oh, no, that's good. Yeah, that uh, <laughs> shows it's real. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So good. So Ethan, uh, 
So the policies are supposed to go to animal control. Well, we end up, um, when we started this rescue, we started just taking them and we, we always had an agreement with animal control that we could, we were straight hold approved. So we were able to take them. Uh, but now there's department policy that allows it. So it makes okay. it, so at least we're legit. Okay. Um, so I take Ethan to, um, see Dr. Sackis at Niles Animal Hospital and, um, we didn't think he was going to make it. The doctor said uh, that he had less than a half a day, probably at most, left, and he would have oh made it. Uh, and uh, the process was getting him an IV and then just feeding him literally like a tablespoon of food every 30 minutes, every 45 oh. minutes, uh, for for and, and gradually increasing that over time. And uh, he pulled together and, uh, and survived. Well, while all that's going on over those several weeks, and that involved us going to Niles Animal Hospital, meeting the doctor there at, at, at like nine ten o'clock at night, and and feeding him and taking care of him. Uh, we got information as to who the offender was, and our animal crimes unit for the Chicago Police Department uh, were able to set up and uh, they tracked him down, and they were able to actually make an arrest. I didn't even realize you guys had an animal. Animal. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, Lake I Effect Brewery. Another <laughs> first responder uh, brew. <laughs> <laughs> you guys had a uh, animal, animal crimes animal crimes unit. Yeah. Uh, we do. It's not big enough yeah. for sure, but yeah. we do have how one many people in that unit? Uh, I think four. Wow. Yeah, for the whole city. But they they do really really do a, a great job. The officers that are there uh, and I work together with them a lot because we've since Ethan we've had several oh, cases. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we had a couple before that, uh, but Ethan was the legally. Most what kind of crime is that? Uh, misdemeanor or felony? Felony. It, no kidding. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's you guys caught abuse. the guy. Like, it, was it just like uh, not feeding imagine, him, or well, I got to imagine a lot of the issues with animal crimes is like witnesses, right? I mean, actually having a, a right. So, a so this one, it, it was his dog. He owned the dog. Uh, he left the dog when he moved out of his apartment. Didn't tell anybody the dog was in there, and a reasonable person would know that the dog is going to eventually starve to death. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Um, and uh, they were able to track down a family member, and uh, the family member said, oh, we thought that dog died. So they showed that they, yeah. they they actually knew that he left this dog behind right. and just assumed that it just passed, didn't, yeah. passed right? <clears throat> so um, uh, they told him, no, no, the dog is uh, alive and well, and we want to give him back. So maybe mm -hmm. you can uh, come on in and sign some paperwork and uh, pick him up. Mm. So dummy came in. <laughs> you, he fell for the oldest trick in the book. He did. He fell for the it. Old, come get sinker. your your come, dog come trick. Come and get your stuff. <laughs> come <laughs> and get your stuff. <laughs> yeah. The old, the old crack cocaine uh, uh, boat giveaway. You know that, that old pearl. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So he actually yeah. count, the guy. Actually so he comes yeah, in. So he came in and was arrested. Oh. Uh, so that was the first case. So the uh, the preliminary uh, hearing on that was over at Granite Central, and. We just happened to just put out on Facebook that this was the date of the court case and went out and about 40 people showed up. So we told everybody when the case is called, just silently stand mm. and then silently sit. And that's it. That was my first time in court as an officer when the case was called and I stood up and having all these people stand up behind me, it, it really had a different impact. Oh, I mean, it, I it, can imagine. It, sent a, it, it surprised the judge and they were, they were like, well, okay, what's going on here? Um, and and really what court advocacy does, whether it's this or it could be domestic violence or it can be any, because there's different court advocates for everything. Oh, yeah. When you have a large enough group that comes, it just reminds the court system that there's people watching. They're paying attention. And we understand that it's easy to get wrapped up in this whole uh, conveyor belt type of right you know justice right. just you know let's push them through let's just get a it done of, get a lot of work to do maybe not enough people to do it correct just, right right so so going. it just kind of resets for that at least that case and right. it says yeah. listen you need to slow down and pay attention we're not asking you to change the outcome because we're here we're just asking you to do what's supposed to be done well i i don't know if it's the same with you guys but for us when we go to court for if one of us are assaulted or something like that we show up in yes. in numbers mm -hmm. and you know we're we're not allowed to dress in uniform, but, you know, we'll wear something that signify, you know, like they know you're there, right, they, right. there and, you know, their strength in numbers. And I, do you guys do that, too? When yes, you guys. Mm -hmm. do that? Yeah. I mean, like you were saying, it, it, it makes, it makes an impact. It does. Um, but let me ask you this with the um, with the dog. Is he allowed to show up in court? Did you bring the dog? No, no. You know, we, we don't bring the, the dog to court. Well, for several reasons. One. 
you're not supposed to. Uh, two, it's more of a shock. Dogs are so so forgiving. Ethan would probably run up to this guy and give him a big smooch. A big, yeah, exactly. So you know, we're like, right. you know, but this guy doesn't you're deserve allowed that. To face your accuser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, right. I'm right. not a lawyer, John. Yeah, but I have seen but, four episodes of Law and Order. So, but I may have know. watched the Discovery Channel a couple times. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you know. P- Pedro has told all the other dogs to act like they don't speak English. <laughs> I object. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where's our interpreter we have to have an interpreter <laughs> wolf um, yeah wow yeah so uh so it, it was amazing all these people came out to court and now that's that's spun off into other court cases that we've had um starvation cases like we have one with this dog named frank and leading up to the pandemic we were averaging about 100 to 110 people would show up and just pack the courtroom wow and uh, and it, it 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 has a significant uh, impact for sure. It definitely just, um, it, it shines a light on, 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 you know, because here with, with, uh, it, it's known fact that with animal abuse, usually there's other issues, right? There, there could be, you know, domestic violence. Right. Uh, we have another dog, Charlie, uh, the offender. It took us a year and a half before we were able to catch this guy. And now it's going through the system. Uh, but this guy was basically what we've lear- since learned is he was um, molesting another child that was in the house, uh, a, a young girl. And to get her to be quiet, he would bring her to where this dog was in a cage. And this is just a, a friendly golden retriever. And he would take boiling water and pour it over the dog for about 45 minutes, torturing the dog to show her this is what's going to happen if you say anything. So it, it, there is a correlation between... Oh, yeah. Animal abuse and, and domestic and, violence. Well, yeah. you, you've always read that the people who do that to animals or kill animals are always that is the common thread for They're serial killers. For, yeah. yeah, that too. Yes. So I mean, it's not for, a it's not a stretch for sure. Yeah, to, somebody to, would to, do something to a living thing to make that jump into an actual human being. Right. There's definitely a disconnect in somebody who can can torture or can do something to a an, an you know a living being right. an animal like that well yeah. i mean you know it, it's amazing that you are the voice for these pets and stuff like that um you know uh, so you know i i think what the work that you're doing is amazing and but what you do uh isn't just the animals you do so much more like what what are the other things that you, right. you get into i i I've, on your facebook live like you were out at the distillery where they were making hand sanitizer and you're, you know, you're doing the beer stuff and, you know, right. you, I can't yeah, keep I mean, up a, with a you. True I can't active, keep up with you. Yeah. You know, a you're out here with, guy in the with these, uh, uh, cop cakes and all the, the pastries that you dropped off to make Corey and I even fatter than we already are. Yeah. But, uh, uh, you I mean, you know, where do you find the time to do all this stuff? Uh, you know, if you were to ask my wife, it's probably the, the time is that I'd probably take time away from the house. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. She's like, all right, listen, I have a list of things that need to be fixed. Fix so this, this is, yeah, right. So uh, that's, that's where that, because there are only a certain number of hours in the day. Um, but, oh, yeah. you know, it's, it really is, it's, it's being part of this huge team. And this team is our community. Yeah. And I think every community has that. Um, and it's just a matter of, uh, you know, if somebody takes the initiative to, to step up and to uh, get involved and do it, you'd be surprised how quickly people will come together. Uh, you right. know, I, I mean, this is, I don't think this is unique to Gladstone Park, to the area we live in. I think we, we do, in fact, have a great community and people that want to help. And when given that opportunity, they step up. Uh, but I think that you, you can do that anywhere. Uh, it's just a matter of just being that catalyst to get yeah. it going. I was going to say, and that's, that's a true testament to you as, as a community organizer is that like, there's just so, you know, and I'll, I'll put my, I'll put myself out there for sure. Like when we were, when we've talked, uh, myself, uh, Vince and Steve, like I've always kind of been in out of the three of us, kind of like the naysayer with social media, you know, and like, it is just, I feel like there is a, or I used to feel like there was a, a huge amount of people who were good about being a voice on social media, but not as active in the community. And you've really put boots to the ground with that when it comes to like 
getting Facebook behind or get not Facebook, but getting getting people in the community with social media behind you and actually getting something done. Social there, media which is, is a, amazing, a great, great networking tool. Yeah. Uh, when you think about just the connection, and I know Facebook is always changing their algorithm, so just trying to figure out how to harness that is in itself. I think you need to go get. Do a you do all the stuff that. yourself? Do right. you do yeah. you yes. do all the social media like yes. with just you? Yep. Because that, I mean. <laughs> Thank God we have other people to do that for us because yeah. I, I am totally lost with social media. Right. Yeah. I can post stuff. I can and, put it and on. And you're 10 times better than me. He, he <laughs> is no good whatsoever. Yeah. So when yeah. you talk about certain stuff, I'm looking at him and he's just he's like, like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> right, right. right. What yeah. is this and, Facebook thing you're <laughs> right. talking about? Face mail? You're talking about that face mail? I didn't get a message yet. <laughs> he probably still has a MySpace account. Oh, he does, man. for sure. I, yeah. I didn't even get that. <laughs> I was even. Then. Right. I was like, yeah, if they need me, they'll call me. Right. He yeah, said so, as soon as he figures out Facebook, he's going to get an Instagram. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it helps. Like, like I would say, as far as posting stuff, uh, probably you know a good majority of stuff on my name is Pedro's page. Is is my wife Anna? So she's the funny one. When you'll you'll see if you read the posts and you know you, you get a chuckle out of it. And I always tease her. I was like, you know, you're you're not that funny in real life. I don't understand. How, <laughs> I just, uh, but, but she's hysterical. Behind writing. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah, writers. Yeah. She's very good. <laughs> uh, but uh, so as far as the content on some of those pages, uh, but the the rest of the stuff, uh, Facebook can be very is very intuitive, and just a lot of people, what like your perspective was originally, right? Right. All right. Why do I care if somebody's showing me their a picture of their food, or you know what they're doing, or where right. they're going, or, or, or whatnot? Yeah, and my thing was more so like why you know people will complain online and maybe right. not do something, but you, I mean, you right. made that transition for sure. Right. But if you use this, you're right. And, and like when I'm posting pictures of my food, right. I'm doing it because I'm actually trying to help uh, grow that, the business, that, that, yeah. bu that business, mm -hmm. you know, whether it be uh pasta de arte or the garage or, uh, you know, wherever the cafe Marbella, right. good tapas food. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. but yeah. showing those pictures, it, it helps people are like, Oh, that looks good. I'll try that place. And you know, it, 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 um, it's really, really a, a great tool right. to just reach people. Yeah, no, it's amazing. It's amazing. Everything that you've done. And, and we didn't even really talk about you being a police officer. You know, doing what are you talking about? He got amazing. shot. Yeah, I mean, twice. Yeah, he he teased us with that in the right, first he five did. minutes. Yeah. Well, that put us in our place, though. Oh, yeah. We asked yeah. for a story. He puts us in his place, and now oh. we're we're talking about dogs. Right, right. We're going to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> we, we went around the world. We did court. a trip. We, we, we did a trip. <laughs> um, awesome. You know what? I mean, I, you, how long can you stay, John? <laughs> Do you um, any? Uh, well, I'll, give, I'll, us one, give, give us one. Give us one more police story. Yeah, just so we could say that we did some for first responders. Yeah, because <laughs> it is it is police week. Yeah, and we, that's why we we had originally had you come in because we wanted to celebrate. You know, uh, we were gonna. This episode is Chicago's finest stories. So when people, in, you know, people mix us up all the time with that 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 little distinction about oh, yeah. Chicago's bravest, Chicago's finest. So for people listening. Um, the distinction is Chicago's finest refers to the police department. Chicago's yeah. bravest refers to the fire department. I didn't make that up. It wasn't my idea. That's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. So today, this episode is Chicago's finest stories. And John's going to tell us another amazing story where hopefully he. <laughs> oh, man, that was going to be an that. amazing story. <laughs> 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 um, boy. Uh, Ooh, kind of put you on the spot. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, I mean, or I'm, you could just like you know tell us an episode of Miami Vice and except like put you worse know, where say, you're I, saying Sonny Crockett. Yeah, you just say I John Garrido. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta tell you, you could have done it, and, and it, I would have totally believed it with, with this nice story. First two years, you're getting shot at in the face. Did you ever want to be on the fire department? Uh, no, you never oh. wanted to. Check, you never. <laughs> no, you never no, said no. Yourself, you know what? I, checked I the I, wrong box. I don't know. I I, I don't sleep that much. So, uh, you know, yeah, you know, well, so, fair enough. so uh, I didn't think that would be the right profession for me, you know, uh, so I think that's actually, that's hit me worse than you. Vince. Oh, it's, it, yeah, it, it's hitting you, Vince it's sleep. hitting you hard. <laughs> Vince doesn't sleep at all. No. Oh my God. I'll tell you, I sleep like a baby every night. I just got off of work last night, slept all night, nine hours, 12 hours. I, I did. Right. Nice. Guys like me no, want to stab him right in the neck. <laughs> I did. Listen, I did. Two over midnight. Oh, <laughs> it's not nothing. It's right. not nothing. We're gonna send you for therapy. Now, yeah, there's right. no doubt. Obviously, <laughs> you guys. Uh, I, I mean, every time I see 
you know, in, in like a, an image of you guys in January putting a fire out and you've got icicles that are just like six inches long coming off of your nose. And oh, yeah, we're, big, like, we're big with the drama pictures. Yeah, oh, yeah, very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those icicles are placed there. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> excellent. Uh, so, no, we, you know, and, and that's the thing, uh, even going back to Rock the Badges, uh, it was kind of a, it started off as a competition between the bands, almost a battle of bands initially. Right. Uh, and we've got battles of everything, Right. There's, right. There's football. There's we've got our, baseball. We've got our yeah. boxing competition that we do. Right. Over. Right. Boxing. Were you at the Were you at the Lax that, boxing? I was not there. No. Okay. But that's Are always you? a great event. Yeah. Oh, I must yeah. miss you. Yeah. One of our guys from uh, our gym knocked, uh, had oh. a knockout. Did uh, Al? Oh. Al was boxing. Uh, Al was not boxing. Oh, yeah. But one of our guys, uh, I'll, I'll say his name, Aaron Sniff. Nice job, buddy. Yeah. Uh, he had a knockout. Nice. It was. It was pretty crazy. Good. You know, we'll actually post that uh, because, uh, you know, all of us from the gym are, are just in the crowd having a beer. And then we look up. It, it totally lost track of what was because there's so many people there, right? Yeah. How, how many yeah, people it's, do you think it's it, that place holds? A right. lot. It's packed, though. I mean, thousands of people. Yeah. yeah. Thousands was that, of people. that was De La Salle, right? Mm -hmm. that they yeah. Did, yeah. Yeah. That place holds thousands of people. And right. there's so much going on. And we look up and it's like, what did we miss? That crowd went crazy. I was like, what did we miss? He got knocked down. Steps back up, they go oh. at it, and then he. Oh, that's my guy out. up there. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're like, whoa. Uh, let's oh, hit some we'll, more we'll actually we'll we'll post that video because it, it's it's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, John, anything else that you uh, wanna yeah. uh, <laughs> that you know you wanna promote or anything you got coming up? I know with the COVID, it's you know you so, kind of slowed yeah, down a little bit, but a little bit. We uh, so we we just ran the uh, the cop cake. Uh, um, campaign we did that this last weekend and i think in what's the, the name of that bakery uh that's um fanny's and that's mm. right on in six corners on milwaukee avenue okay. and uh we ended up selling i think over 250 cop cakes in three days uh so that that went real well and we're going to bring that back you what we used to do is the cop cakes would run for like a month going into rock the badges and then they would sell them at rock the badges so that didn't happen obviously this year so we just right. did a three-day run of it but we're hoping down the road here that we're going to be able to do uh do something How about some fire cakes in uh <laughs> fire cakes that was, uh, <laughs> also, also also corey's also... college name Damn. <laughs> yeah, we, we meet you. um the, so uh, and the premise behind it john is uh cop right? cakes yeah it's just a play on the word cupcakes uh so right. we started the that was actually the the first thing that we did with the uh cop cakes idea and then and it was like the thin blue line right so it has the the blue line right on the cupcake. So someone would buy. They would come in, they buy, and we get a portion of the sales. Oh, perfect. Just okay. like the beer. Awesome. Yeah. So, so it started off the cupcakes, and then from the cupcakes, we went to the thin blue line truffles mm -hmm. at City News Cafe, which is also on Six Corners. Right. Uh, and we would do that Christmas time. So December first every year, we kick that off, and we do it for the whole month of December. And we usually raise a couple thousand dollars um, just selling truffles. Wow. And then we do with the delightful pastries. We do the cookies. Yeah, uh, the thin blue line cookies, and then like I said, now we're doing the beer. Uh, we are trying to do a rock the badges this year still. Yeah. Now we can't do obviously the the festival thing, so we're looking at trying to do a virtual one. Uh, right now, I'm in the process of. Uh, we have the venue, uh, we've got the technology set up for the streaming and all that. Can you say where it's going to be, or <laughs> and, are you uh, kind of playing it close to the best? Uh, it's going to be in the Six Corners area. Okay say that for right now so, <laughs> yeah. uh, right now what I'm it's working so on I need hard. to get it's... I need to get the city on on board right. I know it's always ask you know for forgiveness than permission well this uh, yeah this moment. which I may do anyway <laughs> but but you heard it here first you heard it here first right. yes uh, we're we're looking to possibly do a rock the badges hopefully within the next 30 days oh, wow. so I'll let you know middle of June yeah, we're looking at that'd be great. Yeah, please let us know. Oh, yeah, we'll no, definitely we'll make sure we spread it out there. Um, uh, possibly June 13th. Oh, well, <laughs> I mean, or maybe. Or maybe. <laughs> That's what we're pushing for. We're hoping to do a uh, Rock the Badges uh, virtual one. Okay. That'll be great. Um, yeah. Well, great. Uh, and then we also have our food pantry going on. Okay. Oh, yeah. Give so us information on that. Yeah, so the food pantry, so it's uh, uh, one of our friends from the neighborhood, Louis Gonzalez. Uh, he was actually the first person in the area to pass away from the COVID virus. Uh, and he was also a coach at St. Tarsis's, um, school, elementary mm -hmm. school there. So they have connection a connection to father, Tom, there you go. Mm -hmm. They have a food pantry there that, uh, we named after him 
Uh, we call it the Louis G. Lou Pantry. Uh, he's Louis Gonzalez, Coach Lou. And what, what the way it works is that food pantry from St. Tars works together with the food pantry from St. Cornelius. So the, the food is collected at St. Tars and it's distributed right now at St. Cornelius. Once St. Cornelius closes down completely, then it'll merge and it'll just all be at St. Tars. Right. So um, a police officer put up on Facebook, he uh, put a post there and said that the food pantry was low on food. So I was just joking back and I said, hold my beer. <laughs> and I reached out to the owners of Shop and Save. What I didn't know was the owner of Shop and Save, um, Eva Jakubowski, actually graduated from St. Tars. Oh, wow. So it was off to the races. That was it, huh? That was it. Off to the race from there. So now there's a cart set up at Shop and Save for people to donate every day if they want to. Wow. They started this uh, Bags of Generosity. Um, uh, and basically, you can go there and you spend 25 or $35 and they put a bag together, and then once a week we pick them up. So everybody's been coming together in the neighborhood and making donations. We had officers from the station uh, tip up a collection. Because here, we, we get food delivered to us a lot at the police station. I don't know if you've seen that lately on social media. Especially in the 16th District, we are um, all going to need gym memberships <laughs> when, when this pandemic is over. Uh, and it's great that people are doing that, but the officers wanted to give something back. So... We took up a collection and we were able to buy a um, hundred bags of food uh, for the for the food pantry. Wow. Well, when it started off, there was only about it's only from it's only one hour a day, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday that the food is distributed, mm -hmm. and there was usually about maybe twenty cars that would show up there. Now we're going through about eighty bags of food uh, each day. Oh, uh, so it's really more people need help nowadays. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's dramatically increased. Uh, the communities come together. Uh, we've got donations from Copernicus Center, from Allstate Insurance, Jamie Morales, from Wintrust Bank, from the Gladstone Park Chamber of Commerce. Uh, now we just got $2,500 yesterday from the um, city Volkswagen over there on Irving. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're, we've got a lot of food that we're able to put together there and working together with Shop and Save. We're getting that out every week. So what we're asking is anybody, if they... Uh, Feel like they want to do something if you're home and you're still collecting either a paycheck or you're getting stimulus money or you're getting unemployment or something to help give back maybe right, we'll reach bit. out to shop and save and buy a bag for the uh, uh tell people where that shop and save is at it's at nagel and milwaukee mm -hmm. okay yeah and so you can but you can go do your regular grocery shopping you can throw a couple extra things in your cart and then as you leave they have a cart just sitting there that you can drop off. That's the one stuff way to that do you're it. You're going to donate. Yeah, one way to do it is that, or you can just tell them you want to do one donate of the giving bags in a twenty-five dollar bag or a thirty-five dollar bag, and then they'll take it. They, you know, they're not going to give you the bag. They'll just take the money and, and it'll get added to the bags when we pick them up. Wow. Uh, or you can even call it in. You can call Shop and Save and just tell them you want to do that and donate over the phone. Okay. Yeah. That wow. Sounds like a pretty awesome cause. Uh. Well, I mean, John, what a guy! <laughs> what a guy you are! <laughs> well, we are uh, more than honored having you on here. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we're, you. you know, uh, we follow you. Uh, you know, I, I feel like I've been on all these uh, little, you know, adventures that you've been going on uh, mm -hmm. lately, and uh, it was finally actually nice to meet you in person. Uh, thank you for uh, all the stories and everything that you've done. And uh, keep us up to date on what's going on with uh, this first responder stuff and the Rock the Badges so that we can promote it. And, um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll be with be you. Yeah, yeah, whenever you need us, we'll, we'll be with you. No, absolutely. I appreciate it. Thank you very okay. much. And it really, it, it is a, a team just, uh, you know, working together like this and, uh, you know, Police and fire are always coming together, doing good things. So oh, yeah. I, yeah. I gotta say, this, is, this might be one of the most calm exchanges we've ever had. Is it like is it not too much yelling and screaming back and this forth? This isn't New York, not Corey. Too much this isn't New well, York. Yeah, I mean, not you know, not fighting, <laughs> but definitely a lot of ball busting oh, back and yeah. forth. Huge. Oh, there you go. Hey, yeah. any? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. You guys, uh, there we you guys go. ever ever? I mean, obviously, we we might have different different timelines on our stuff, but uh, you guys ever ever? fuck with each other at the station or, or prank each what's other. The worst, what's the worst joke you've ever been involved in? Oh, man. Um, well, I mean, we've taken squad cars and filled them with, uh, you know, those little packing peanuts. <laughs> oh, the whole, the whole, the whole yeah. Uh, officers wow. will be, you know, at lunch and they come out and their entire cars <laughs> full 
<laughs> of those. Uh... They open up the door, just falls out. Like, yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah. That's about any the only other, prank that I can tell you about. The new guy. Oh, that's fair enough. Right. Fair enough. Well, what about allegedly? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> any, uh, yeah. Yeah. New guys coming in, and and I mean, also, what's a new guy joke that you guys do to your? Uh, what do you guys guy? call a new guy? R- uh, uh, rookies or uh, yeah, they're they're PPOs. PPOs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They're probationary police officers. Mess with them at uh, all or no? You know, uh, we don't too much anymore. Uh, it is a. It's different. Day no offense, Cody, sure. but millennials are a little more sensitive. <laughs> yeah, they are. Uh, uh, no, I t- it, it, regardless of sensitivity, we're relentless. Uh, we just <laughs> beat them up. The whole millennial thing, we just, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we've actually had some some officers that come in, and they just got their license before they came on the job. Really? What? Just a millennial thing. They're just with Uber and Lyft. Yeah. You know, they're, so <laughs> the, you're 26, so you're a little older, but these 22, 23 year olds, yeah. uh, some, some of them just, they've just. Well, his only saving don't... grace is he's from Naperville, so he had to drive. Oh, oh If you're yeah. a millennial from the city, from the city yeah. Yeah, that's you what... probably haven't been behind the wheel. And do you know how to drive stick shift? All right. All right. So. <laughs> all right. All right. But, uh, we thought of it. we had him there, Jeff. Right. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, we're actually, uh, it's surprising. I remember the first time when they came, uh, the FTO came in and said, Yeah, my recruit, uh, he just started driving like six months ago and he's, he's a little nervous. And I was just oh like, my God. Too bad. Right. Right. <laughs> he needs I to mean, figure out how to get I from point to A to that, point B as fast as he can <laughs> safely. So, we've got to figure right. it out. Right. Yeah, yeah right. pulling these crazy. Jeez. Wow. Well, awesome. on that note thank you so much again yeah thanks john yeah, thank uh, if people need to find you where where would you want them to come find you at to find me f- uh, for which thing on your social I mean, media. whatever Give yeah social probably media. social media yeah Just, yeah either send me a message on facebook and john garrido or uh our rescue is garrido stray rescue foundation garrido stray rescue foundation yeah garrido stray rescue foundation is the rescue and then uh, of course if you're anywhere on the gladstone park chamber of commerce or the gladstone park neighborhood association right or my name is pedro my name is ethan or my name is frank awesome you can track me down <laughs> somewhere awesome there. thank you, you so Freddy much you got Johnny. offended yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> who who are you talking about yeah is it another all woman right. yeah <laughs> all right john thank all you so right. much thank you very much thanks all right, well, John Garrido has just left the building. Uh, it was a pretty amazing podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah. We wanted to thank uh, Lake Effect Brewing Company. Um, you can find uh, them and order their beer at lakeeffectbrewing.com. Yep. We also want to remind everybody that um, we're still donating a portion of our T-shirt sales to uh, young Zachariah, who's running for um, Falling First Responders. And um, you can check out their site at running the number four heroes.org, running for heroes.org. And if you want to do uh, order our t shirts to uh, help support Zachariah, you can find our merchandise at Chicago's Bravest Stories.com. Yep. What'd you, you could, think, uh, Corey? Uh, I thought it was great. And uh, John, I'll tell you, I, I almost feel like we didn't even give him his due respect. The guy's got his hands in a lot of. A lot of different things and he just with the shelter definitely strikes a special place for me and uh, me and my family with uh with our love for dogs um definitely make sure to check out the garrido stray rescue um you can find them at garrido's stray rescue.org and you can see all all the all the dogs there i don't even want to go to the website because i know i'm going to grab one or two um so <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the wonderful things that he's doing, and um, like Vince was saying, definitely visit uh, visit check out our merch on uh, Chicago's Bravest Stories dot com, and um, we're still running that promotion till June first, right? Yep, Vince? June first, and um, order some of this beer. It goes to a good cause, and I think the beer is pretty damn good. Yeah, it's yeah. delicious, right? I really like it. Yeah, uh, pleasantly surprised on the beer. Um,